Okay, perfect.
Hello, everybody. This is Least coming at you with Strong Carlin. We are casting our fourth Apocalypse Show Match. Yenta from IRK and Dragoon. Uh, we, this is the fourth match we're casting. Uh, we have vo previous VODs on my channel. Uh, we will get that onto YouTube as well. Uh, right, so so the uh, this is the fourth CPL uh, Apocalypse Show match. So it is going to be a best of nine. Uh, end of the world style like the Korean tournament if you guys are caught up with that um, we will be playing all nine maps even though it is um, even though it's technically a best of nine and we'll have a series winner even if somebody gets to five wins we're still going to play all the maps um, and like Lisa was saying there have been uh, three previous matches uh, a PVZ a PV, or a PVT and a TBZ so Art of Turtle versus IRK Father, um, Snipe versus Thrive, and IRK Age versus VT George, and they're all uh, linked as bots. So you should definitely go check those out. And this is going to be all live casted. We've got our wonderful observer Tim keeping us updated on the action. Uh, me and Strom, like I said, are going to be on the cast. The map pool will be all the CPL maps, which are eight of them. Uh, and then Escalade. So strong. Yeah, so just... Yeah? For those of you just tuning in, what is CPL? Please inform us. All right, so CPL is short for the Coach People League. Uh, we are currently in Season 5, and it is a league for, for the foreign brood war community and specifically for, Im like, a league for improving and getting to know the game and the community better. So we split players into kind of three slash four tiers based on their skill. So you, and then you get split into teams. So you play matches that are of similar, uh, like you play, you get matched with players of similar level. Um, and uh, then each team kind of has a set of volunteer coaches who are like usually B to S rank players that have volunteered their time to help out their team um, and help everyone improve. So it's kind of like a like a very much a team experience of everyone learning and playing together and being able to kind of play some matches for your team at your own skill level. Uh, the season has already started. Uh, we're in our kind of our first week right now after preseason but you can still join the waitlist and you should join our discord and speaking of starcraft uh we want to give a quick shout out to bsl uh the bombastic star league the ladder phase of bsl 9 is starting up right now so go make a ladder account and ladder for it uh it supports the tournament just laddering. They they get sponsors based on how many people participate. So the more the better. Uh, even if you don't think that there's a chance that you're going to make it into Pro League, there's Chobo League and Gosu League. Uh, so there's three different leagues for players of all different skill levels. Uh, totally a great time. Highly recommend checking it out. Right. So now, without further ado, we will uh, announce our show match for today. Best of nine, PVZ. Core players. Well, in one corner, we have IRK's, or IRK clan's Yenta. And in our other corner, we have the clanless Dragoon who plays Protoss. Yenta plays Zerg, by the way. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> we got Snipe in the yeah, chat. Yeah, so we do have... Zasagi. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so we do have... Um, we do have a PVZ for you guys here today. Um, I don't... I gotta say, I myself am on IRK, and Yenta is on the B team, so I know him fairly well, because uh, he's my teammate. Uh, good Zerg player. I think he's around 1800 MMR 
and he kind of has a very off-brand style. I think he's a very aggressive mid-game player, as far as I know. Um, oh, I haven't seen him play for a while, and I think I well, have been hearing recently that he's cleaned up his build orders a lot, and I think that's probably why he's kind of I feel like he's jumped up in skill level a little bit in the it like just recently because he's especially because he's been playing so much. Uh, you guys probably recognize his ID because I feel like he's on lots of the servers all the time asking for games. So really excited to see what he's going to bring to this match. Yeah, and Dragoon, a solid Protoss player. Uh, to be honest, he is a little bit of a mystery to, I believe, both of us. Uh, I definitely have not seen him play outside of a couple games in CPL that I've caught, caught the cast for. Uh, but we'll pretty much just be figuring it out as it goes along. I'm excited to see what he brings to the table in this uh, battle of wills. Yeah, he was actually a substitution. I was supposed to have 9-11 play today, but he had to drop out, unfortunately. So I was looking for a Protoss replacement, and Dragoon stepped up. But I do know that he was at least practicing last night, I think, with uh, Sigrun. Uh, and I think because Relentless was observing the game. So... That's exciting. Like, I, I, he hasn't known about it for very long, but we know he's at least prepped some builds, prepped some maps. So I'm hoping to see an interesting series. And by the way, um, as far as the CPL status of these players, uh, IRK Yenta is a Tier 1 player from Team Socialized Healthcare, or TSH. And Dragoon is a Tier 0 and assistant coach um, from Sam Yang Fire, the long-standing clan ish cpl clan of uh faust and cadenzi and crew but dragoon has not been on sammy and fire before this season as far as i know all right i think that's all we got for you folks for the intro uh without further ado both of our players are ready let's get straight into it i'm excited all right map one is going to be sylphid guys All right, so in the top center of Sylphid, we have Dragoon, our black Protoss player. And, and on the left side of the map, we have IRK Yenta, a Zerg player in the Magenta. Uh, I can't... Oh, I muted him. Yeah, we'll put the audio back. I on can real hear quick. it. Yikes. All right, so our first map is going to be Sylphid here. Um, nice standard map to kind of open this up with. I have been setting the map order for these series, it's not like loser picks or anything. Um, and the last three, I think we've started with Fighting Spirit, and Sylphid seems to be the modern standard map. I see it in everything, so I figured we would start out this time around uh, with uh, this map instead of Fighting Spirit. Yeah, I like See Sylphid how that, that kind of goes. I like Sylphid Yeah, me too. It just, it's just good. It's just a good map. Speaking of things I like a lot, this pylon placement... <laughs> Oh my gosh, who, this man, he's going to win the game. I'm sorry. First of all, spamming over 300. Second of all, pylon placement, look at how many cannons you can fit in there. You can fit like four cannons behind that wall, man. See, Tim knows. Tim knows. Let's go. <laughs> this easy game. Easy game. Plus, he's going gate first, so if Yenta has the audacity to try and three-hatch Hydra after that, it's going to be over. All right, so Lise is already a fan of our uh, unknown Protoss <laughs> player here. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, gathering fans with both uh, my co-caster and our observer here, because I know that Tim really likes uh, walls where you can fit lots of cannons far away from the wall. <laughs> All 
Oh, this All is right. this is interesting actually. He's going forge before nexus. So, I mean, it's it's a small thing, folks, but it could signal some kind of some kind of aggression uh, with cannons possibly because generally you want to go nexus first. Did he go nine pool? Did Yenta go nine pool or something? I can't. He definitely got a pool room. before the hatch, but I wasn't watching because I was trying to uh, uh, figure out my audio. Okay, it was. Yeah, over yeah. Tim says it was over pool. I thought it was over pool. Um, this just looks pretty standard from Yenta so far. He is taking that kind of like fake high ground uh, third base, which strikes me as a little bit unusual. Um, oh wait. Did he just cancel a hatchery there? It looks like he did. Yeah, he definitely had that third hatch going down at the uh, high, fake high ground. I think... Wait, did he ever scout? Do you think he thinks this is two gate? I, I feel like he thinks it's two gate. Yeah, I mean, bringing two probes... Because otherwise, why would you cancel that hatchery? Very unusual to bring two probes with gate expanse. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he scouted the front. Because I don't think he drone scouted at all. Oh my gosh, uh, this, is so, this is so actually good for for Dragoon. Yeah, this is really good for Dragoon. As for one, he he's doing a lot die. of damage with his Zalots anyways. Yeah. Um, he's just kind of like... I think Yenta's going to get the Overlord in the main soon. Um, but I think Yenta also made a bunch of uh, drones. Like he, I think he made two sets, like two pairs of Lings or one pair of Lings, and then made a bunch of drones. Yeah, he totally thinks that this is is two gate. Yeah, you can see his overlord or his drone, I can't tell which on the minimap, just getting to the natural. So he's gonna be very disappointed when he finds out this is actually gate expand. Yeah, he might have to do some kind of like ling all in from here. Uh, I'm not sure if he's gonna try and put that uh, third hatchery down. Does manage to clean up the three zealots in space. Um, and Pros doesn't have that zealot on the wall. Tim just showed us, so oh, he's gonna get it in that. But you can get around across those rocks on the right side, so he might choose to run Lings in there anyways. We do see a second cannon being thrown down by Dragoon, and yeah, Yenta going to lot. retake that um, retake that third base high ground. Looks like he also did lose uh, the Overlord that was in the main uh, of Protoss, so. I thought he was supply blocked for a second. Did you see that? Or oh, maybe it was no, he was, he was. I thought one of them was supply blocked. I think Yento was supply blocked. Like you said, he lost the Overlord. Right. Oh, he lost the Overlord to the cannon at the front. Yeah. All right. We have a full set of control or a full control group of links, uh, speed links on the outside. Or no, they don't have speed yet. Um. Looks like they're just kind of going to retreat. There is two cannons there, so it's not exactly uh, ideal for Zerg. Uh, Yenta's still not mining gas. Uh, did re-put his third hatch down again, so. And we're seeing four gate from Dragoon. Uh, I guess just knows with everything that happened to Yenta, with the scouting information he was able to get from those probes and zealots, that Muta's not necessarily the biggest threat right now just got to deal with any kind of ling all in uh, and then possibly some hydralisks afterwards he's trying to sneak out a probe let's see if he can get there uh, yeah the lings not looking like they're going to be able to track it down quite in time these lings don't have speed do they that's crazy uh, no I think I thought he like started mining gas and then pulled like he's still not mining or he started mining gas again now um, but maybe he didn't get speed oh speed just finished Right, yeah, yeah. So he might have just been a little bit a little bit late on that. Luckily when you have a sunken at your wall, you don't have to worry about probe scouts that much. So he's got that going for him, which is nice. Right, right. Unfortunately, he is down fifty supply to twenty seven. So he's he's in a little bit of a rough spot uh right off the get. Let's see if he can hold against this four gate pressure. Yeah, I really like the decision to go for the four gate pressure by Protoss, actually, because I feel like the more time you kind of give Zerg in this position, the more likely he is to be able to redrone and kind of get back on his feet here. 
But we see Tim pointing out he only Yant only has six drones in his main, uh, six in his natural, and kind of seven at his third. So <laughs> if he moves out kind of like before the re-droning kicks in and the third hatchery really kicks in, uh, I think that Zerg's just going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and you I think just he's going to be so many zealots. Yeah. He's got over a control group of zealots, I believe, or a full control group at least. Yeah, I think that I think Yenta got plus one carapace for his lings with that evolution chamber. Uh, I don't. Yeah, it hasn't finished yet, but he did get an evo chamber, um, and I don't think he's got a hydro den. So I feel like that was his, maybe his idea to try and hold this. Uh, where I guess we're going to see how that works out. He did. He's building lings. Uh, and Sunks at both of his bases. Or his natural and his third. Alright, we do see that fifth catchery coming down at the third base. Let's, oh my god. See how these, uh, lings do. These zealots just find their way all into the nooks and crannies of the base, so it's hard to get a good surround on them. Yeah, I think those drones maybe could have been pulled uh, pulled a little bit earlier. Uh, it does look like he is going... He's just kind of running over the third here. I don't know that Zerg can recover from this. Yeah, I think this is just... This is a very quick GG uh, uh, situation. Yeah, well, he just... I think he just didn't scout. Um, like, Genta didn't scout, and he assumed that it was two gate when it was gate expand. Um, and then he kind of took this open third, uh, which is, like, very difficult to defend. Um, because there's not, like, a really good sense of, yeah, GG is called, uh, after losing that third base. So we do have a quick 1-0 lead for our Protoss player, Dragoon, uh, taking the first map, Silphid. I wonder if, uh... That was intentional. Uh, if it was intentional that he sent out two two probes to try and make him think it was two gate, because if he did, that's a huge brain play right there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe he noticed that he didn't get scouted. Like he noticed there was no drone scout or overlord scout. I'm not sure. Yeah, that'd be very possible. Very possible. Yeah, definitely some uh, some nice play by Dragoon, though. I feel like that doesn't really uh, predict what we're going to see in this series. Or at least I hope it doesn't, uh, That the series overall. Um, but nice, solid win for our Protoss player. And I did like his choice of a follow-up for the situation. Yeah, I agree. All around... All around, not a great indicator of what's going to happen in the future, but a very good job capitalizing on a favorable situation. What is going to be our next map, Strong? Um, I think our next map is uh, Bloody Ridge. Neo Bloody Ridge. So current ladder map and CPL map. And we do have, we do have our Zerg player Yenta in the top right and Dragoon in the bottom left. Yeah, we just had a little technological issue there for a sec, guys. The game started, but we did lose the screen share for a sec. Um, Tim, can you put uh, Do Not Disturb on? Oh All my right. gosh. Oh my All goodness. Right. Five pool. Five pool right off the bat. Let's go. He said he's been practicing ZVT all week, so I guess if you're out of practice, it's time to pull out one of the classic cheeses in the book. Is this just the five pool map? Like, am I missing something? Because uh, there was somebody was prepping for a series in my team the other day, and Art of Turtle was helping him prep, and he just five pulled him on this map, and I was like, "Oh, all right, cool." Like, <laughs> is this is Bloody Ridge the five pool map? Like, should I be five pooling on this map? Is it just the meta? 
Oh I have my no God. idea. Like, I person, I just got five <laughs> pooled on this the other day, so I totally know what you're saying. Like, I don't understand wow. why anyone five pools on a two-player map, because it's so easy to scout. But if you're just a big brain, like, when I, when I played the guy, the guy was super big brain and sent out a, a drone to make it look like he was trying to, like, 11 hatch or something like that. So I yeah. spent, like, five seconds trying to trying attack to that the hatchery. Drone. Yeah, exactly. And then I finally <laughs> went in and I saw a finished pool and six lings pop and I was like, oh my god. We do have the lings on their way. Let's see what uh, Dragoon's reaction is. He's going to try and put cannons down uh, at the front. Okay. What is the proper response to five pool with a forge fast expand? Uh, what, I, what I understand to be the right response is to put a pylon down in the main and then put a cannon down in the main, and then you can just two This doesn't them, look like it's it. This does not look like it's it. I think that's probably why people enjoy five pooling on this map, uh, is because the rush distance is so short that it's probably, right, right. it's probably a difficulty to get the cannon up in time, regardless of where you decide to put it. But yeah, this does not look good for Dragoon. Uh, All right, so we'll see how what Yenta chooses to do from here. We do know the uh, the kind of like patented or patented uh, patented Tai Two Five Pool patented. There I'm trying to go. like pronounce the T's and it's not working. Um, <laughs> where you go into a macro game does look like Yenta is going to put down a second hatchery, um, but he does have two links in the main. I feel like they're not actually getting that much damage done. Uh, I haven't seen how many probes they got, but I don't think. Maybe like four or five, which I feel like isn't enough. Yeah, a couple kills. And to be fair, they are forcing a lot of lost mining time from these four or five uh, probes that were attacking them to start with. But, right. Like but you like you said, when you five pool, you need to get a lot of damage done. Yeah, like I, I, I'm not sure what the, the deal is with like going five pool into a macro game, but that is a huge investment for Zerg. Oh, he's going to see it, too. He puts a pile on his main, and the drone sees it immediately. Oh, my gosh. He's going to try and catch that Ling. Uh, doesn't quite manage to get it. We do have a Zealot in the main of Protoss kind of chasing these two Zerglings around. We'll see how long they last. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh. Easy, easy dub for the Zealot. All right. They get uh, cleaned up immediately. Three hatcheries. we got... Three hatcheries on two bases. Yenta decides, okay, let's just play it like a ZVT. It doesn't matter. No second, or no natural for Dragoon yet. Yeah, just kind of uh, both players kind of deciding what they're going to do with this opening now. It's been kind of strange. Yenta kind of droning up a little bit. Uh, does have another set of lings back to try and prevent scouting from the probe. Or... My bad, excuse me, has four links. Is mining gas with uh, three drones now. Was only mining gas with one drone for a little bit. So he does have almost 250 gas banks, so I'm not sure what he's planning on doing with that. Maybe a three hatch hydra. But it seems like a lot of gas have banked for that. So maybe he's going to, yeah, I don't know. I know it was a huge investment, but I got to say, in my... In my... Oh, hydra. Hydras, okay. Yeah, I don't know anymore. Yeah. Dragoon looking interested in throwing down his natural, but not quite there yet. Something that would really be scary is if you went like two hatch meter off this, and I know it's like, okay, how are you supposed to. How are you supposed to get your economy and stuff up in time, you're going to be flat broke. But you can see how delayed Dragoon's tech is. Like, he's got four gateways and he does not have his main gas yet. So, it could be something interesting to try. Obviously, yeah. we not going in that direction. It looks to me like um, Dragoon's just going to try and come with a strong one base push, no? Even though he's got his wall on his front. Yeah, that's, that, oh my gosh, I said that extremely loudly. Please ex excuse me, chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I I think I think you're right. I totally was expecting the natural to go down, uh, but it looks like he's just gonna go four gate zealot try and run Yenta over. With high right. though, I don't so, know how well this is gonna go for him. I'm not sure. I guess it. I, I don't know. We'll have to see what goes. We did see the Yenta was already putting a sunk up in his natural, um, but he doesn't have a wall. The way that he's kind of set this up, and the the thing that makes um, that makes Hydra strong against Zealots is when Zealots don't get surface area. When the Zealots actually get surface area against the Hydras, it's like actually pretty hard for the Zerg or the Zerg player. The Zealots win that fight. Right. Um, so we do see the Lings kind of acting as a buffer to try and keep the uh, Zealots from getting on top of the Hydras. Hydras are the real DPS in this fight for Zerg. That's a lot of Zealots, but he does not have... Just now putting down a Citadel. Uh, throwing down a crap load of cannons as well, just to make sure he doesn't get counterattacked. Uh, I honestly, with the upgrades, if, if Hydra range finishes soon, because he's already got Hydra speed, I think this could go really well for Yenta. Uh, oh, he's going all the way around the long way. Right, Yenta so Zerg's not going to see this. Oh my gosh, this could be so bad for you. Oh, look at right, so third base. He doesn't know there's no third. Um, Yenta doesn't see it with the Overlord, though. That's the big... Oh my gosh, Tim, you're so good at observing. Uh, I, was <laughs> not even, I was not even thinking of that. Uh... <laughs> uh Alright, yeah, cannons, a lot yeah. of cannons at the natural. Um, Yenta does now spot out this counterattack. The Hydra's headed across the map. Um, we're gonna see if uh, Yenta can stop this here. You know, the Zealots are still so slow Zealots. If he pulls these drones... I don't feel like he's in terrible shape. Uh, Protoss built a lot of cannons, and Protoss didn't build a natural. Like, he needs to send those drones away, though. Yeah, yeah just now building a natural. And the supply is almost even. Never a good sign for Protoss. And it's not as if it's not as if uh, Dragoon has some big tech advantage. He just went four gate zealot off one base. Yeah, so Yenta, I believe, lost, I think, three drones and a sunk into that push. Um, and didn't, and maybe like six hydros. So I feel like that was, and now he's going lair. Like, I feel like that was okay for Yenta. And oh, he's okay, going to expand good. now to a third hatchery. Man, this is a crazy game. This is such a weird game. Such a weird game. Does, is it? Is Dragoon trying to double expand? He's got a probe up there, but I don't know what it's doing. I think this Ling, or oh, this Hydra is looking for that though. Look at this. Yenta's so good! So big brained. Oh my gosh. This is what I was saying. Like, he's, he's plays like weird styles a lot. So I feel like he's kind of more at home with these kind of like weird situations that don't necessarily follow straight build orders than a lot of players. Right, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I totally... Yeah. Yenta is the kind of player I wish I was. Like, I'm the opposite. Whenever it's not just a straight build order, if I can just do my build and then attack, I'm like 1,700. But whenever someone, like, attacks me before 10 minutes, I'm like, all right, well, it's just GG now. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Or does it, or does something that you don't know what they're doing? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I feel like we've run into that a lot playing. Um, if I like pull out a build that you don't recognize, you're just like, I don't know what this is. Oh no! I Goodbye. remember last season. I remember last season playing. Uh, I forget who it was. Oh, uh, it was Ellie because yeah, we live casted Ellie. it. Remember, me and Okra live casted that CPL yeah. match. And I remember Ellie <laughs> asking Ellie afterwards what the what the build was and he was just like no dude i was just making hydras making hatcheries so i was like all right well that's cool i guess <laughs> i was so confused 
Oh, yeah, and you were so confused that you just kind of like did nothing, and we're like, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. Yeah. It was so bad. Um, but Yenta, I think much more. Oh, that lurker. Those lurker eggs on the ramp are so cute. That's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't. Like, doesn't have quite enough to. Uh, there. Yeah. They're they're gonna try anyways, but. If these were only uh, those worker eggs on blockchain where they just never, never, they never died. hatched. Then right, maybe he so would kill Dragoon <laughs> Dragoon varied behind on tech, so I don't think he has uh, observers yet. Yeah, Tim just pointed out the robo it hasn't even finished yet. Uh, so no observatory even on the way. Uh, so those lurkers are just gonna keep Yenta locked down on three bases for now. Uh Dragoon definitely can't push up that ramp or into that natural with no vision on the lurkers. And you can see, ironically enough, Dragoon does not have any Dragoons. So even once he has observers, <laughs> he's not gonna be he's not gonna be in a great spot to push into lurkers. Right, right. Well we'll see what Yenta decides to do kind of on his on three base here. It looks like Dragoon's planning on taking a third. If he can take a third and hold it, I think this starts to look pretty scary for Yenta. I mean, I'm not... This, like we said a bunch of times, this is such a weird game that it's hard to tell exactly who's ahead, who's behind. But this is such a small map that it's like... If you can take three bases... Unless the Zerg goes extremely fast hive, which it does not look like he's going for, it looks like he's going double and going to like heavy hive over. Um, Do you see the Queen's Nest? Um, what? That's Tim... currently selected? <laughs> Why? Tim is making me look bad out here with his top nine. <laughs> this is... Never mind. I think it's, uh, I think it's Yenta that's making you look bad. Everyone, I just make myself look bad. Let's be honest. We all know this. We all know this. But See, I don't even need to roast you anymore. You just do it to yourself. I've been trained well. What can I say? What can I say? But yeah, extremely fast hive makes a lot of sense on this map. I feel like since there's so few bases, uh, before hive gets out, you really want to be ahead on bases. But once hive gets out, you can kind of, you can kind of be even. Right, yeah. I think he's going to try... It, there'll be some kind of... He'll have some kind of plan, though. He's got double Evo Chamber, so I'm assuming he's going to go for some kind of, like, crackling... Uh... Crackling bust? Do you think? Right. Because uh, right? he, he's high on three it, but... bases, so he's not going to get, like... He's probably not going to get Defilers. He's probably going to use it to get one thing specifically. Um, cracklings would make sense, because they're super strong against Protoss. Um, are just super strong in general. And then if he gets 1-1 one, one on the two Evo Chambers that he has right now. That's true, because it's only have plus, plus one. one. Yeah. 15 minutes like, I, feel, I don't know, I feel like they'll be strong. To... Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think Cracklings could be a strong kill too. Oh, oh Lurker Drop. Lurker Drop, that's such a pain. Completely. Did he get all those probes, or were they transferred? No kills, no kills. He just transferred them. Oh, okay. But still so annoying to have to evacuate the entire natural mineral line. Yeah. Especially when the start of the game was really low eco. We do yeah. see Protoss, though, 30 supply ahead. Um, so they're going to try and take a fourth. We'll see if Protoss scouts it. I think if he scouts it, he can probably shut it down. Um, like zealots are headed in that direction. So I oh, didn't see where he set them on the map. Just kind of like watching their uh, their point of view on the mini map. <laughs> All right. So we kind of have, the game's like normalized to some extent here now. We do have the kind of Protoss roving army. Uh, it's going to find that fourth hatchery, uh, so Yenta will lose that. Um, luckily there's no drones there yet, so he's just losing the hatchery. 
He might be better off to take that other high ground expansion and defend it with lurkers, to be honest. That yeah, one, that yeah, makes that a lot of sense. Us. That makes a lot of sense. But speaking of cracklings, he has just in infinite cracklings hanging out in the front of his base. I don't know if crack is actually done yet, but he's at least got unlimited circlings hanging out in the front of his base. Yeah, it's done. Cracklings are done. Um, so he did get that with his hive tech. Can we see the upgrade right, on so the Zergons Protoss real quick? Oh, zero, zero. Wow. All right. He's already had one selected. Uh, one, one. The one, 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 one just one. finished. Yeah, so Yanta has one, one, one now. Um, so it is kind of some kind of like crackling build going on here. This is so wild. Yenta starting to catch up a little bit in supply, uh, despite being even on bases. Um, trying his best to hold this high ground, sending... Well, Protoss trying really hard to get up there, but there isn't actually anything up there for him to kill yet. There's not even a drone up there to make a hatchery. <laughs> um, so I feel like this is just actually pretty good for Zerg because Protoss is just trying to force his way up this ramp and losing all of his units trying to do it. You know? And there isn't even anything up here for him to kill. Yeah, that's gotta be such a disappointment. You see, you go up there. Oh my gosh. Okay, he's making freaking havoc in the main. Uh, no minerals left, so he's not harassing the mineral line that much, but just still... Anytime someone works a job, I mean, this goes back to what I said about him not being able to weird stuff. Oh my goodness, that storm just killed. That, that storm was... just killed two entire control groups of links. 27 <laughs> kill High Templar, that's absurd. Man. Storm. I mean, you kinda, like, ideally, you wish you didn't have to use Storm on Zerglings, but especially Cracklings, they just do so much damage that you can't afford not to. And then. Yeah. When you get 27 off two storms, that's pretty That's pretty good. Yeah, so we do see uh, Yenta kind of just macroing out to uh, Lurker Ling. Uh, is going to try and retake bottom right and hold that ramp uh, again. Throwing down some more macro hatcheries. We did see he was floating about 12, uh, 12k. Uh, sorry, uh, 1.2k a second ago, but he... He threw down some more hatcheries, and he spent that now. Uh, Protoss looks like he's going to try and take a fourth base. And, yeah, Protoss about 15 supply ahead. I feel like that, I feel like Dragoon really shouldn't have tried to bust up that ramp. I feel like that was really bad. Like, he could have just sent the Observer in and seen that there was no hatchery building there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh... And, and he lost a lot of units trying to do that. It's always this dance in... I'm kind of like Facebook right now. But it's always this thing in PvP <laughs> where you try to find the least fortified position and attack there. Because um, it's so hard to move lurkers and stuff around that it's, they'll almost always have an unfortified position. Um, so I, I agree. I think... Oh my god. Crack went to just dying so quickly. Right, but they are actually trading pretty well with the army. Uh, we do see, though, that Dragoon is taking, uh, trying to take out that expansion in bottom right. Looks like he is going to send some units to try and stop that, but not before he gets the hatchery. Man, if, right. If he's going to lose all those game, Dragoons. There is truly no justice in the world if Yenta wins this game. Man, I honestly point. think, I think he's going to. It looks Man. really like, good. Like I really for him think he's right going now. to. It looks he really has good well, he has hive out, and dragoon just to me seems like a man without a plan. Like he just seems like he doesn't quite know what he's doing, and he is actually floating a lot of minerals now. Oh, he's he's macking up, so he seems okay. But like he he just like I feel like he might have had a window there to take a fourth base, and he just didn't take a fourth base, and now I'm not sure that he's going to get a fourth base. You know? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, when Zerg was teching to Hive, he probably could have taken a 4th base behind that kind of push that he did um, instead of trying to bust up that ramp. And now he just seems like he's too close for comfort in supply and behind on bases uh, and behind, maybe a little bit behind on tech as well because Zerg has Hive tech out in 
pretty much full force. I'm curious if we're going to see Defiler soon out of Yenta. Um, and Protoss doesn't have Reavers yet, as far as I know. Yeah, it would be nice to see Dragoon get a couple of Reavers, try and park them on top of the ramp, uh, and as well with a couple couple other units, and see if he can take a fourth base. Uh, Yenta passing up Dragoon in supply for the first time all game. Um, all right, super... but we do have an Arbiter out, so... Oh my gosh. Is he just going to recall? He's got to be recalling, right? Like, you don't stasis Zerg. That makes no sense. No, no. Um, yeah, that would be, like, the not a use, not a very useful thing, I feel like. You just wouldn't get very much supply stasis. Yeah. Um, but recall, the thing is, is that I don't think Yenta even ever got a Spire. So any kind of drops, like, even just, like, a, a speed shuttle and storm drops, I feel like would be super strong right now. Uh, but a recall might just do it as well. The thing is, though, is that most of Yenta's tech is upgrades. So the one thing he used the Hive for was the Crackling upgrade. Right. So if he loses the Hive, I feel like it's not... He's not, like, losing the ability to make any of his tech as long as he rebuilds the spawning pool and the Hydra Den quickly. If he does get recalled in the main. If he gets recalled in one of the expansions, I don't know. I feel like the surface area, especially in the third and fourth base for Yenta, is very small, which is kind of like how why I feel like this map is kind of okay ZBT. Because even if you have defense at the front of your ramp, it still kind of covers your whole base because the surface area of the base is really small, if that right. makes sense. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. So I feel like, yeah, look at this. If he recalls in there, he's kind of going to be recalling on Lurkers either way. Yeah, I hope that he has uh, some observers with his army when he when he inevitably recalls. He does have one with his main force. Uh, look at these like... cannons. That's the oh fun my thing. god. That's the fun thing. This about is late cannon game. man. Late game PvZ. You just have so much excess minerals that it's like, throw down 11 cannons? Yeah, sure, why not? I don't care. Cannon man. Cannon man. He's... Yeah, you're right. Why does why is this idea dragoon? He doesn't even build dragoons. This guy. All right, Yenta does scout the arbiter, and three corsairs. Looks like. Where is he gonna recall? Looks like Looks he's like gonna recall, recall the main. I feel like recalling the natural might have even been better. In this situation, like I said, what is he gonna get here? Like he's gonna get the Evo chambers. But they, those build rebuild really quickly, so I guess it depends on where the upgrades are. Yeah, I think. And how fast Zerg manages to clean this up. On the like the natural side, had all the macro hatches. The thing that really scares me as a Protoss is the crackling defiler combo, especially right, when you add right. lurkers to the equation. So if he prevents them from getting defilers. That's kind of worth it, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. It looks like he just went for the spawning pool, and then he's going to get cleaned up. Right, so I don't know how fast um, Yenta will have rebuilt the spawning pool. It does take quite a while to build, um, so we might be kind of without links. Or, oh, but Yenta floating like 2.5k minerals and 2.5k gas. Um, that's like, that's a lot of lurkers. So hopefully he kind of macros out. Uh, yeah, but I do think like if he, yeah, if he had recalled on top of those four macro hatcheries at the natural, I feel like that might have been just a bigger deal for Zerg. We do see Yenta now like 20 supply ahead of Protoss. Man. There is truly no justice in this world. Yeah, Tim, He's going Tim point pointing out Entra's going ultra, yeah. Honestly, I like it. It's very Yenta. It feels, to me, I mean, I know there's some debate about this, but like, to me, it feels like when you go ultra list to ZVP, you're just telling your opponent to get out of the game. Well, I mean, I don't know, dude. He's 40 supply ahead, so maybe that's how he's feeling. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'm ahead on bases. I'm ahead two bases. I guess just one now. He's got his fourth up with Infinity Cannons. I forgot about that. Um, right. 
These Corsairs actually He's getting really a lot of order though. overlords for free. Yeah, I think they've got like uh, maybe like five kills between them. Um, we were seeing like yeah, 145 out of 123 supplies. So definitely not ideal. Uh, but Yenta did have a little bit of a bank, so it looks like he kind of tapped into that a little bit. Um, is we do see him making a lot of lings. Oh no, he can't bust up this ramp. No, There's don't no do this. Chance. No, no, no. There's no chance. You needed the filer. You needed the filer. This is always what frustrates me, is when they have just 20 cannons everywhere, and it's like, all right, I can't bust anything, so I guess I'm just going to take more bases. Yeah, definitely very annoying as Zerg. Um, I was kind of, I was kind of talking about that with one of my coaches, uh, like maybe a couple weeks back, and it's definitely a lot of like forcing their army to be out of position and then using defilers. Um, but we do know that Yenta is going ultra tech, so we'll see what he what he manages to get out and what his kind of like carapace upgrades are looking at now, because ultras really kind of depend on the upgrades. Right. Yeah. You want to get tightness. You want to have like three three. Ideally, you want to have three three uh, melee and carapace. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and Kindness. Like, 5-3 Ultras are super strong. We do see uh, Protoss has 3 two, 2 upgrades. Um, Zerg do full damage to shields, though. So... And, and we just like that... Just pointed out that we have 2-2 two, two Cracklings. This is actually... So many Overlords. So many Overlords, man. Like, this has got to be so annoying for Yenta, just like that. Uh, in big part due to the Corsair harass, in my opinion. Uh, Dragoon has taken back the supply lead in convincing fashion. Uh, he's up 20 supply now. Looking to take a fifth, probably. Yeah, I mean, Yenta also uh, mined out his main and his natural, so he's kind of on... Or and is third, so he's he's kind of on two bases right now, right? Mm. And he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't have the gas, um, at his uh, fifth base, but he he has like a two point three k bank of gas, so as, assuming he's going to use that to build ultras, uh, we'll have to see. I don't think he can. I I think he can't let Dragoon have top left. I think that's kind of what this comes down to. A hundred percent agree. Protoss I just don't know if he's allowed has... to have that. I don't know if he's got the army to contest it though. Like he's trying his best right yeah, here. Let's for see what sure. happens. He just doesn't have the tech. Is the thing right? And yeah, I feel he doesn't like have the tech. There's been a little bit too much of this kind of like running units into Protoss's army, um, and not kind of doing a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zerg feels like Zerg might be bleeding out a little bit now. Uh, Protoss with the 50 supply lead uh, coming back here. Man, what a crazy game. I feel like these guys are pretty evenly matched. I'm this excited is, about it. If we can get this good a game off of 5 pool, this is going to be a quality series. Yeah, for sure. And Arbiter Tech. We have Arbiter Tech already. It's the second game and we have Ultra Tech, Five Pool, and Arbiter Tech. <laughs> I'm been... into it. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan of these guys. I mean, I already knew I was a fan of Dragoon after his insane pylon placement the first game. I mean, how can right, you not be? Right. <laughs> how can you not be? I feel like these Arbiters are just super annoying as well because half the time Zerg can't see Protoss' army. Oh my gosh! Oh my, God. Stay safe. oh my gosh! He heard me say Protoss is never gonna stasis, and then he did it just to spite me. For sure. Oh my gosh! All right, Protoss gonna try and bust up this ramp. Uh, think he will be successful. Unfortunately, that is the place where Yenta has chosen to rebuild his tech. Um. 
as they're just kind of bleeding out at this moment. I'm gonna go ahead and storm those lurkers. Yeah, we got a DT trying to work its way in here. And considering the air superiority of Krodos, it doesn't seem like he'd really be able to get the uh, Overlord. Over there. Man, the oh, crackling, crackling rally, though. Is so strong. Man, this has been so back and forth. I feel like that stasis actually hurt Protoss more than it helped Protoss. Because those units unfroze there, and the rally came in, and that's how we managed to hold that. Yeah, that's very true. You know? That's very true. I feel like I I'm not sure. Because he had cause... so much DPS before. Like, he had more DPS when he was fighting before. Right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. He's making... Right. Oh. Now... Yenta has to get rid of top left. 100%. It has to go. It has to, it has to go get right gone. Now. Yeah, it has to go. He can't... I don't think he can win this game. Um, he needs to stop making Zerglings. He needs to make something that's heavier on gas. Um, this is kind of why it's nice to be on Defiler tech, because Defilers are a lot... Uh... They're a lot more efficient than ultras, and they also cost less minerals. Mm -hmm. So any any time with like plague uh, on these armies, oh yeah, Jet, uh, Yanta tapping out. Right, that was a crazy game though. I I don't know what to say after that one. How are we possibly gonna follow that one up strong? I don't know. I guess we're gonna see. Maybe we're gonna have proxy nine nine into. Uh, 15 minute game on the next map. Uh, the rain special. Is it rain that goes for proxy 99 nine and then goes into long games? I've seen it at least twice. I feel like from that's like many. Specific I'm pretty sure that's many. Oh, that is many. Uh, yeah, many zealot man. <laughs> right, I do see some uh, Sam Yang fire folks uh, cheering on their, their teammate Dragoon in the chat. It's always nice to see. Team Solidarity. Yenta fighting for the Europe team, though. Our next map's going to be Fighting Spirit. A classic. So maybe we'll have a less, uh, less weird game. Alright, so we do have uh, Dragoon in the bottom left and Yenta in the bottom right. IRK Yenta. Gotta say the clan tag, right? So it works. You got it. You got I it. would be proud. Let's be honest. I, yeah, yeah. Swore you this <laughs> last game. That's funny. Protoss is just that good, man. Protoss is just that good. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was a very that last game. Wow. You know, I, I I started this series out. Yeah, I know. Me too. I started this series out by saying um, that Yenta was an off-brand player. I don't know that I was expecting the game to look quite that weird. I gotta say, I but know, I was... very good games. Very good games. Well, the first the first game was a little bit lackluster, but the second game was very good. I remember playing with Yenta a lot, and I mean, I guess it's different when you're in a show match versus when you're just practicing with a partner, but I've never gotten five pooled once by him, and he, I, I specifically remember just a very aggressive mid-game Hydra, Hydra heavy composition Hydra like lurker. you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think he is, I mean, this is a best of nine too, though, like, I feel like a Zerg, you have to mix in a five pool, and I feel like the fact that he did that early, um, I don't know, it's kind of like, you have to be scared of this now, right? You have to know that Zerg is willing to do a really aggressive strategy like that, right. um, and is also, now, like after that game, willing to do a really aggressive strategy, and also capable of taking that kind of strategy into a really long game successfully man if we have that long a game every single these guys are going to be exhausted by game five if these keep going into long games like pvz in particular 
I don't know about the Zerg side, the Protoss side just feels like such a nightmare late game. So we'll see we'll see what happens, yeah. I guess. First game like I mean, Zerg, Zerg exactly. late game is just like units. Exactly. So many <laughs> Um, oh, I think you have the score set wrong, by the way. You have it 1-1, but it should be 2-0 for Dragoon. Oh, you're right. My bad. My bad, folks. All right. Working on the, working out the production quality here still. Working on it. We're working on it. We, we <laughs> can have the highest production quality possible, but I will still find a way to screw things up. Don't worry about it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Lings are already here. This is so... If this is, I feel like this is a mistake this. by Yenta. I think he should have just run the links into the main. Well, okay, maybe not. He Never just mind. loses the cannon to it. He didn't pull probes fast enough, I think. Oh my gosh. All right. We have, we don't have a second cannon started There's now. Oh in my base gosh. Hatchery. Proxy hatch. Jeez. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, that was a quick one. All right. <laughs> Alright, okay, so Yanta takes game three. Um, man, the proxy hatchery, though, I love it. And I don't think that. Dragoon's thought, though, is the thing. Like, I feel like he can bring that back. Like, he can do that again in another game. Because I don't, because Protoss didn't scout that. Yeah, yeah, he GG'd before the proxy hatch even mattered. So, totally could pull that out in another game. All right, is I think we are Eddie? going to take a, yeah, I think Eddie is our next map. I believe that it is time for us to take a uh, kind of like an eight minute break here, uh, which I feel like is a good thing after that really long game on Neo Bloody Ridge. So I think we're gonna take like an eight minute break and uh, be back. This is a best of nine and they are playing all nine maps. So the idea is to give them a little bit of a chance to catch their breath. Here. That's true. Any? Yeah. How's two zealots before the cybercore finishes? Which makes me think he wins zealot first. Um, going oh, he's doing a reaver. He's right. gonna do a reaver build. This doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I think that George is gonna scout it though, looks like he's gonna send an overlord right into the main. I've seen that on the map. Um, so I think that's probably the reason for the weird timings of things, and also because of the cannon. The extra cannon. Um, is he still only on two links? I think he is. Okay, so he's out, moving out, so he's gonna have to build, build a couple more links here to deal with that. Um, and his overlord is going to scout the robo. So you have an idea that okay, something's up. Yeah. We'll see if he clicks on it. Moved over to his overlord yet. We'll see if he... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, he actually moves moves it down. So I'm not sure. He probably... I think he probably saw the robo. He did yeah, the uh, his screen, screen bounce down, over it, so... Probably. Yeah. This will be interesting. I might have to. I will see what his. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know that I had anything super insightful to say. I was going to say that he might go mute us. Hmm. That is a good play. Does he wants fire. Yeah. Uh. Like even just five mutas. But it looks like he's building hydros already. Oh, he didn't go fire. Oh, interesting. Maybe he just forgot to put the spire down, or maybe this is some kind of lurker build. Lurker build seems more likely. I think there's also, remember, there was a while ago, there was that build circulating on Jan server that was like uh, this, the Sulky DVP build, where you just don't get a spire until later and just go hide your lurker. Oh, that's actually what I do, ZVP. Uh, the only reason I don't think that's the case is because you get your third hatch before gas. And so your oh. third hatch generally tends to go down at like uh, 250, something like that. And his third hatch didn't go down until like 330. Uh, but he also sent his drone in the wrong direction. Back he so. did misclick. Uh, five cannons from Aggie. Uh, 
that's a bold play. Uh, just making sure he doesn't die to anything. Usually when you go for a robo like this, you put the robo in front and then you don't have to make as many cannons because you can just crawl a reaver out, but Aggie never afraid to march by the beat of his own drum. Uh, going for more of a harass based play, keeping the robo safe and going to get a shuttle probably with speed. This, oh, it's drop. It's drop, isn't it? It's fast Yikes. drop. Yikes. Okay. Look at this. That's a build. It's a... Build it's no good this game. This is... This is, I think, pretty good against what Aggie's doing, though. Like, especially if he moves the shuttle out first, but, like, he has one reaver, he's building a shuttle. Um, yeah, and he's got shuttle speed, and he's moving the shuttle out. Just as the overlords come in, and it's all Hydras. So Hydras are... Oh, and he doesn't oh, even, he doesn't see, even it yet. see it yet. That's so unfortunate. Oh my goodness, this is oh so good. God. By George. Yes. I love this play. Rip the dream. Oh man, and here's the reaction by Aga. He's gonna have to bring the Reaver right back. Um, and I don't know that he can stop this, because he just doesn't have very many units, because he went for such a fast Reaver. Yeah, and if you micro your Hydra as well, you just can't. You There's just, just can't so many Hydras. Hydras yeah. Oh, and he just loses the shuttle immediately. I think this is game. Rip. Wow. Aggie said it better. Great. Some lengths before Mutas and kind of ambushed that T Rex Academy push. Uh, and now he's going to go into his nine Mutas and looks like straight into Worker immediately to defend that third base. Um, and you can see what I was talking about earlier in that base about the, uh, just kind of like the area being a little bit smaller, so it should be fairly easy to defend with workers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the, the relatively, relatively quick lurker play, even though he got his mutas out and everything, of course, uh, but yeah. only going for the nine mutas, am I correct? Yeah? Can we see how many mutas uh, he has? I think so. I think it was only nine mutas. I only saw him make men. We'll see if he flies some more or across the map. Um as, oh no turret's not quite defending the, the main. Oh that's rough. Um yeah. This is going very well for Zerg right here. Um just getting that first uh push like just kind of bodied for Terran makes uh Zerg's position very strong on the map and I expect him to go probably straight into high. Um, just based on how fast he got those lurkers. Oh look. Yeah. Queen Tess coming down right now. You're killing it right now. That way is strong. Let's go. Yeah, well, I mean, this guy's I've been playing with this guy for like the past five days. He's been teaching me stuff, so. Very true. Very true. It always helps when you're casting something. It is. Like yeah, true. And I know Father is well pretty well. Too. Oh, Muta's taking a bunch of damage on their one run, though. But um, did only lose two, so... Still got some containment uh, power with that, especially with Terran being kind of even in supply on Zerg. Of course, when you have Muta's out, it's a little bit of a supply box for Zerg. Hey, what do you think of this? Uh, I mean... I mean, I... I... I know it doesn't tell the whole story, but like Warp Gates just pointed out, the supplies being even, real it looks like a really good game for Heart the Turtle. He's got the advantage from the jump with the lings surrounding the push. Uh, had some good Muta harass, found found a weak point. I think everything's going right for AOT, probably going to game three even. But Father's pushing out. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, we'll see if he. In this case, because he stayed back, I think that Art of Turtle's gonna have time to get... Oh, he hasn't started his workers yet. Oh, he's got... He's got three there. workers. Natural, though. Father can just bust his natural right now. Man, if Father if father busts the natural before these lurkers finish, that would be such a disappointing ending for Art of Turtle. I'm pretty sure wonder. that's what... Well... Yeah. So Terran can just do this. <laughs> Terran? Um, I think that 
Yeah, I think that Zerg will hold eventually, um, but this is definitely nice for... It's better for Father after doing damage like this. Oh my gosh, um, he's gonna get sure. so many drone kills with these drones just sitting right there. So many drones. Oh my god. That's like a full control group of drones. I think he just got every single drone that was at the natural. Um... Yeah, you check, take a look at the supplies. There was like almost ahead of the supply. Oh my god, he even he took, moved the drones back to the natural. He moved some from the main too, so I think he has like three drones. Oh my left gosh. In the main. Gotta wonder. Like, Ark of Turtles is not as much of a tilter as Father is, but, like, you gotta wonder what kind of impact that had on his, uh, on his mental game. Like, that's good. You gotta be feeling so good after all the initial encounters, and then to just lose that many drones like that. Oh, man. Yeah, that's definitely something that Father has to go around the high ground. Um, so yeah, if you just look at the supply, like before that fight, like before he, he ran into the natural, they were both at about 75 supply, and now Art of Turtle down to 47, and Father up to 84. Um, so this looking much better for a Terran player. Um, we do have two Evo Chambers and the Defiler Mount out, so we'll see if Sir can get into Defilers and hang all of them and try and get over I think this is worse. This mic. All right, so our net, our next map is Eddie, and in the top right we have our Zerg player Yenta, and in the bottom right we have our Protoss player Dragoon. Dragoon is currently up two one in this best of nine series. All right, Luis is just trying to fix his. We just to fix it over the break, um, but didn't quite finish. So just bear with us for a minute. I'll talk here for a sec. Are we going to see a seven pool? Who knows? This is the big macro map. Big macro map, big macro game. So I don't know if Yen can be easier for Protoss to kind of cut off the reinforcements uh, from the natural to the third. Uh, and it is a long distance uh, if they're kind of sending zealots around uh, early game uh, for Zerg good to kind of keep track of. It's easy to catch them out of position. But I actually feel like Yenta probably won't play like that because, like I said, he's kind of more known as an aggressive mid-game player. So we'll see what he chooses to do. All right. I, can you he hear me? He is starting. Yeah, I can hear you. Right. We are opening up nine pool speed here from Zerg. Yenta's pulling everything out. This is this is actually so funny. I'm just going to turn really the game hard. music down a little bit for me. This is really hard to deal with this Protoss, actually. Like, the initial nine pool, obviously you just make a couple cannons, and you're probably safe. But the complete lack of map vision afterwards, unless you do something like hide a probe, uh, is very, very difficult. Right, and he actually doesn't have a probe on the map right now besides his scouting probe. Um, so we'll see if he does send another probe out in a minute to try and get that map vision you were talking about. Uh, I could definitely see Yenta kind of following this up with a two-hatch meter. I feel like that's actually probable here. We do see he is going to uh, get this probe right out of, out of there, right away. Try that his best, anyways. That is definitely the most important thing with uh, nine pool speed, is to just make sure you absolutely deny scouting. Like I said, the chances that you completely kill him, pretty low. But the chances that you're deny scouting for a follow-up all-in, pretty high. He needs... How many probes do you have to pull with this? I feel like once he's their speedlings, they just get in. Oh, he's building a second cannon. Good. 
I mean, if he just has the most Gosu Probe Micro, then maybe he gets away with this. But every time I play, this is not nearly enough. And he's putting down a second cannon. Let's see what happens. Yenta not going straight for it, so I guess he doesn't feel confident either. He hasn't actually... Oh, okay. Third cannon does go down. Uh, that is a lot of lings, though. A full control group of lings from our Zerg player. So, really, yeah. Is trying to get all the way in there. Does manage to get in, and is going to get oh into the main. Gosh. Um, Alright, so we do have six Zerglings, Speedlings, six Speedlings in the main of Protoss. Um, yeah, they can just kill a Nexus. Honestly, if he doesn't drill them, they're just going to kill the Nexus. And there's no and way Dragoon... Yeah, this is insane. That he just like he didn't have enough probes pulled because he didn't have a zealot finished. He just needed to have more probes than that pulled. Oh my god, he's just gonna get every probe. Look at this. And this is after this is forcing three cannons. Like even if yeah. somehow all the lings died right now, Dragoon would still be in an awful spot. But the lings are still yeah. alive and well. Yeah, and I'm not sure what Yenta's follow-up is going to be, but yeah, like I said, I think it Muta, 9 full speed into 2 edge Muta is very, like, Yenta style. Agreed, and it does look, he's getting the lair, so it looks like he's probably going to go into Muta's. That is, if Dragoon just doesn't I already tap Dragoon's out. I think Dragoon's dead. Yeah, yeah, Dragoon's just dead from here. I mean, wow, okay, this is, we talked it up as if it was going to be a super long series after that four pool game or the five pool game, but every well, other game, game has think, been like five minutes or less. I think that this, uh, this, this is, this is going to drag out. Like no one's tapped out. We're still in the game. Um, but I do think that I don't, I feel like it's going to be very hard for someone who hasn't taken their gas yet to deal with mutas when the spire is already down, you know? Oh, I agree. That's 100%. just how I'm feeling right now. Like the only thing <laughs> you can really do is mass cannons. That is not, not an ideal... That's just, like, decision. delaying death. He lost a lot of probes. But we'll see. We'll see We'll see what he decides to do from here. Um, we'll see what the uh, Muta Micro is like as well. We do see Yenta is going to throw down a Sunk, make sure he's absolutely safe from any kind of Zealot attack. Um, looks like Dragoon doesn't really have very many Zealots. Uh, he's lost a ton of mining time and probes there to those uh, six speedlings that got into his base, so. <sighs> Dragoon already back up in supply, Protoss OP, of course. But like you said, he's saving up, he's saving up money for Mutas, so he's jumping right He's saving up. Larvid money. Yeah, look, 32 supply. Um, and there's just no Muta defense at all. And Dragoon has no idea what's happening. That's the brutal thing, especially if you lose mining time like that. A lot of these follow-ups can hit before Corsairs are even out. And other than probes, Corsairs are your main source of scouting information. So there's just no there's no way that he can know. He's getting a Stargate as fast as he can, but these mutas are going to be here before the Stargate even finishes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just, I don't, especially because he doesn't know. He is going to send a probe in now, and he might see it, but, like, oh, the meter's already there. It it's doesn't too late. Matter. Yeah, it's just too late. Yeah. All right, so. We do have our, with that, our series tied up 2-2 here. Um, Yenta taking a couple of swift victories uh, over our Protoss player Dragoon here. Just some uh, early lane aggression. Can be hard to uh, hold that wall when Zerg is really interested in breaking it. But our next map is going to be Match Point. Uh, I think this is the first time that we've played Match Point in the series and not had it be on Match Point. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I should... Put it in a different spot in the pool. You should put know. it like first so that there's no way. I just no keep <laughs> so there's no way it can be match point. I just kind of keep moving them around. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this. 
All right, guys. So we do have our Protoss player Dragoon in the bottom left of match point and Yeta in the top right. And they are tied up 2-2 now. So this is this is great, okay? I just want to say, this is our most even match so far. I'm really excited about this. I don't want to jinx anything, but there is a high possibility we could get all the way into a 5-4. So we'll see what happens. That's what... That's what me and Strom have really wanted from the beginning, is just get a 5-4 in there, get the monkey off the back, and then you're all set. Then, every, no matter how the other series go, you're still I will be happy. I will feel satisfied. I will feel like I made good matches. Do I even get credit for this, though? Because I actually subbed Dragoon in. Yeah, I don't know if you can get... I don't know if it's fair to give you credit. So, Strom still I feel good game. about this, though. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Usually we're so polite to each other. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Alright, just an overpool and forge fast Did... expand. I'm sorry? Uh, what? Build was that from Zerg? Isn't it an overpool? Was it? Oh, oh, Tim says he sent out the fifth drone to scout. Oh, he's doing so another proxy weird. hatch. He's doing another proxy oh. hatch. Oh! What a oh, baller. Oh, I see, I see. Sorry, I'm actually I'm casting from my phone and everything's really small. <laughs> this is so good. Um Dragoon's got a Right, okay. This is like this is true Agate strats. Like I, I feel like Agate would be proud right now. And the thing is with Forge Fast Expand, how much can you really do? Like you can just you have to pull probes. And then I know that it's 300 tied up and you're delaying your expansion by a bunch and everything, but if he pulls seven probes to deal with this or something like that, if he scouted it right now and pulled like seven probes, and then you just cancel right as it's about to die, how frustrating does that got to be as a Protoss player? And that's even if he scouts it. He might not even scout it. I don't think he's going to scout it. Because he didn't know... Just so big. Like, he went proxy hatch that other game, but he doesn't know that it was proxy hatch like he didn't ever scout it because he actually died to the links at the front before the hatch was proxied oh he is scouting it actually right now as i say that he scouts it oh he's just throwing down a cannon uh will he have enough i mean i guess it only starts with one larva right so it doesn't yeah yeah um the main aggression here might be the links at the front though if he does get link speed right away off of overpool you can do a kind of like a ling run by um and that can be super strong uh just like against protoss in general but especially when you have like another hatch in the main because then you have like extra kind of speed leans yeah very annoying very annoying to deal with all right let's we're gonna see we're gonna see this is gonna be a little bit of a micro battle now <laughs> nice probe wall around the cannon it's just keeping that's it pretty company. funny actually cannons i swear cannons seem like they take so long to uh to actually build to, to build yeah yeah so we do have uh two links here and we are going to run all of the other links uh into the wall we got one zealot out and a bunch of probes oh, that are going to be pulled. Does get the cannon. Um, kind of an awkward situation for Zerg because he kind of went through the wall instead of around it. If he had gone around the wall, I feel like that would have turned out a lot better for him. I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. Because he kind of, he got his Zerglings kind of like clumped up. There's one Ling there that's like super hurt. If it gets hit at all, it's, it's dying immediately. All right. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's get another probe. I feel like this is okay for Protoss, though. I think with how with how brutal this... Or how invested 
this early game of yeah. Destiny was. Durg is yeah, super, I think it doesn't really yeah. matter. Uh, as long as you okay, hold it. Speed is done. Oh my oh. gosh, I don't know if he's going to well, hold it, though. That's a lot of Zerglings. Yeah, they have speed now, also. So, yikes. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, speed lanes in the main. That's not what you want. We do see Protoss also kind of like building this cannon. Um, I think, yeah, Yanta, Yanta just going to build a hatchery out of uh, out of position of the cannon. The thing with this is that really Zerg needs the extra hatchery for the larva right now. He doesn't need it for the extra mining because you can produce Zerglings continuously off of one hatchery with like three drones. And so there's enough mineral patches just in the main for one one saturation for nine drones, and that's three hatches worth of link production. Strom, right. I think you so might. So we do win have this. Protoss knocked. Yeah, this is looking. Uh, this is looking very strong. Yeah, increasing. From rough. Zerg. he does have he does have two cannons with another one far away. If they try and, I don't know what that range of that cannon is. Like maybe it can hit it if some zerglings try and attack the right side of the the gateway or something, but not going to be too much help if Yenta does decide to go for a bust. Right, does look like he's running in right here. The problem oh, is, is that sick the drill. Can drill over this cannon. Sick drill. Um, there is that is just so many speedlings though. Um, good drill gets the cannons, but only has one ling left. Um. And doesn't manage to get any more probes. So, but there's no cannons left. And looks like Zerg is just building links. Yeah, the thing is, you can, you can, you just outproduce Protoss building cannons. Like, there's no way Protoss is going to be able to build more cannons in time. Yeah, and he lost his gate at the front. So he just has had a very low kind of zealot count, supply count, this whole game. Um... All right, looks like we're still, we're just staying on links from Zerg. I don't think he's even killed that cannon yet. Outside of his natural, no, it's still there. No, it's still there. Need Hydra to kill that cannon. <laughs> All right, I think that these links are just going to kind of contain Protoss now. Oh, I think, is Dragoon going to hide a base in bottom right? It looks like it. Yeah. It looks like it. Oh, I like this. This is dirty. Evienta, Evienta is going to play dirty Dragoon show, and he's not afraid to play a little dirty in return. But yeah, uh, so far the dirtiest thing he's done is a gate expand that's been mistaken for a two gate. So yeah, exactly. The mind <laughs> games with the second pro. The man. mind games. Yeah. I think this is All right, this is starting to stabilize for Protoss. I mean, even without the hidden base. Yenta does not have any possibility of mining from the natural for now. Uh, he's only mining minerals. He's not mining any gas. Okay, he's mining a little bit of gas. Did he just start that? Oh, he's proxying gateways. Oh, that's actually, that's really smart too. That is really smart. He is kind of running the lings around the long way. He is going to get rid of this uh, cannon. Probably going to go ahead and put a hatchery down uh, at his natural in the right spot for mining. I don't think he's going to scout those gateways, though. I mean, why would he? There's no reason to check over there unless you exactly expect this kind of thing to happen. Yeah, and like I said, like I, I don't think these players really know each other at all. So, I feel like this is kind of a uh, a bit of a blind series in some ways. Uh, unless, I know Dragoon was prepping yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if Sam Yang kind of, uh, like, looked up some replays of Yen. I don't know, that's something that happens a lot in CPL teams. Looking up replays for opponents. Alright. Third, or... Third hatchery or fourth hatchery? I think fourth hatchery going down to the natural. Yeah, there's two in yeah, the Yeah, that's four hatches, and he's going into hydro production now. Yep, and into the lair. Oh, no. Wait, did he go lair? No, no lair. No lair. Just hydras. All right. All 
We do have uh, Drone Hydra Man coming in out here. I'm probably still in one base with the proxy gateways. So I think that... Hmm. With the situation where it's at, Protoss doesn't have an expansion. He kind of has to do damage with the Zealots, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very confident that he will get some damage done. It looks like he's getting speed this time. I'm not sure if he's getting plus one as well. Uh, but it really does come down to how much damage he can possibly do. Because uh, two base to one, very good for Zerg. Very good for Zerg. So he really needs to... Uh, he really needs to take something out. Take out a hatchery, take out some drones. Sending out a bunch of zealots. Yenta going to see those. Obviously not going to scout the zealots coming from the proxy. Alright, you do see his Templar tech as well. So I'm wondering if he's going to bring uh, DT into this. Uh, DT, but there's not maybe really he's... anywhere he can slip it past. I mean, you could if he slipped it past into the main... Uh, the overloads are still slow, so oh, it looks like he's just gonna get storm though, which is also just as good. I think well, he might be better. Have just morphed an archon, actually, which yeah, he did just morph oh. an archon, which not only is good if they try and go for a muta switch, uh, which right is a possibility. Again, you don't really have any scouting information, so it's hard to know what the zerg is up to, but. It's also good if they try and drone drill. Archons just eat drone drills for lunch. Right, that makes sense. That nice splash damage on the uh, on the drones, but drones can like really. For those of you who are watching who are not super familiar with like PVZ or the game in general, uh, if you against zealots because they are male, uh, Zerg often fights with hydralisks which are range units, and you can move the workers uh, using the kind of, you see there's like an extra mineral patch uh, in the natural zerg that we're looking at right now. You can kind of like send the, the drones to mine there, and they stack up on each other, and if you hit stop or attack, they kind of, uh, they move around, and they can uh, kind of like budge the zealots over so that uh, they don't get as much surface area on the range unit. And the DPS adds up for Zerg. But, as Lise was saying, Archons do splash damage. So, if they attack one drone, it just kind of like adds up on all of the units there. Both sides sneaking bases in the top right and the bottom left. Or the top left and oh the bottom my right. Goodness. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. <laughs> These players, I'm so into this. This is great. This is this is a good match. <laughs> this is a good match. I like this a lot. It's just hidden bases all over. <laughs> Dragoon especially. Like Yenta, you can kind of be fooled into thinking he's on He's on just two bases. But with Dragoon, it's like he still doesn't have a natural at 13 minutes. He's got to have a hidden base somewhere. It's <laughs> just not even... Right. And by the way, I'm, I, I'm surprised... Dragoon didn't do any damage with this. Yenta did a, just a really solid job macroing. He had a little bit more of an economic engine than I was expecting. And able to push this Force of Zealot Archon away without taking any damage at all. Right, if he actually hadn't had an Archon and he had had Storm instead, I think he could have busted that. Looks like he is going to collect a couple of High Templars here. Um, hopefully oh he doesn't gosh. lose them to these Lings. Uh, that's always scary when Protoss has like their army and it's not right beside their Templars because they can be lost so easily. Okay, first storm goes down, pretty good. Um, so they're going to retreat. I try and get up this high ground. Man, Hydras glitch out so bad. This the Zealot's trying to get some surface area over top of the Hydras. All right, reinforcements coming in from Yenta. That is a lot of Hydras, folks. A lot of zealots too, and I feel like Zerg is just kind of bleeding units on this walk back. All right, does manage to retreat. We'll see if Yanta decides to go into lurkers. The Dragoon did retake his natural, so he's going to be on three bases. Although Yanta, if he knew that that base in the bottom right existed, he could make. Protoss's life really difficult by just moving his hydras around the map. 
Because this little death ball of Protoss has to kind of defend both bases by being on the map right now. Right, right. That's oh, a, that sick a storm. sick storm. Oh yeah. my gosh. All right. Going to just pick off that Morphine Archon. We're seeing some very heavy Hydra plate by Yenta right now. Uh, Dragoon's still unaware of top left, just as Yenta is unaware of bottom right. I right, man, I hope they watch the cast or watch the replays after these games. <laughs> Oh man, the storm on the ramp. So many hydras just walking right through the storm. Oh, picks off right, the Templar. It's gonna That's pick nice. off the High Templar. Worth. That was not worth. That's another six storm. Yeah, this is just kind of the hydras, the units just getting caught up on things. Um. All right, we do see Protoss storming those Lurker eggs, um, and he does manage to kill all Lurkers but one, um, and then with the ex additional Storm clearing off that contain. So Protoss very much ahead in supply right now. Three base to three base, good for Protoss. Definitely, definitely very good for Protoss. This is one of those times I really wish, just to show it off, that Dragoon had... You can do this thing with Archons, where you put a zealot on top of the lurker and if it's already been stormed you can attack a zealot with an archon and since it does splash damage it actually kills the lurker as well um not super important oh right especially since the lurker had, har had already been stormed it was already down to minimum health but not super important he just pulls back yeah yeah oh he does finally see the hidden base and he's gonna send a lot of troops down there it looks like All right, there isn't actually much to defend here. Cannons die very fast to Hydras. Um, but we do see Dragoon's going to send a couple of DTs. There is an Overlord on that ramp. That's um, a great Overlord. So we overlord. are seeing the probes. Yeah, very nice Overlord. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to... Looks like a nice split on the target firing of the Hydras. A couple of Hydras kept targeting probes uh, while Yenta targeted a couple on the cannon. Um, so really nice target firing from Zerg. I would like to see him run over and pick off those High Templars before they get stormed back. Man, I feel like the discovery of the hidden base is really important for Yenta right now in this game. Oh, I agree with you 100%. Like, before he discovered that, I really was worried for Yenta. But now... Oh my god. These guys are just matching each other so step for step. Uh, Dragoon's yeah, starting to mine so out of true. his main... Um, so he needed that base. Like, he's still on one mining base while Yenta is on three mining bases. Right, and the other thing is, is when you have a base hidden, do you expect, like, when you lose your hidden base, are you expecting your opponent to have a hidden base? Right? That's like mind so, I feel I like you're so distracted. Like, I feel like you're so distracted by the fact that you hit a base that why would you be looking for your opponent's hidden base, you know? No, I'm totally with you. Yeah, that's that's next level stuff. Man, this match is crazy. This is, this is so sick. This is so sick. Who expects, like we've had a couple, we've had a couple games that have gone by pretty quick, but there have just been a couple absolute gems in this series i feel like i feel like also though like every game that we've had is developing the meta game of this series <laughs> yeah like, exactly it's like okay. we've had five pools we've had proxy hatches <laughs> so sick all right it looks like i think dragoon is yeah gonna find this base here um, and it's completely dead, so Yenta's gonna have to pull all the drones and try and take probably, um, oh man, all those drones are gonna die, that Archon. Look at that, they just melted. Archons. He good. should have tried to send them out the, just a small thing, but I think if he had sent them out the ramp to the right, uh, he could have actually just gotten them, gotten them to safety. 
You end up probably going to have to take... He does have the money for it, too. Uh, to take a couple more bases. Yeah, he's going to throw down a third hatchery there. I'd like to see him take bottom right as well, I think. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to defend it, though. Protoss on two base can be pretty scary. Although, I think Dragoon's almost mined out his main. To be fair, no, Dragoon has mined out his main. So, to be fair, it's one bit mining base versus two mining bases at the moment. Dragoon trying to set up uh, in this tight little choke point just throw down a lot of cannons so that he can take a third. Looks like he might be able right. to get away with it, at least for now. He's got his army back into a defensive position, or into a position where it's going to be hard for Yenta to just go and kill it. Right, so we do have Zerg kind of sieging that high ground with lurkers for the moment. And while he holds this position, I would really like him to just take that try and just double expand like you said um yeah taking that bottom right base i feel like he's just he needs it he needs it he needs both those bases and a round of drones oh he does have drop of course he has drop in santa <laughs> who, what am i what am, who am i kidding what is this <laughs> of course he has drop <laughs> this man, man look at animal. these lurker fields really nice spread on the lurkers All right. We do have the observer out here for Protoss. Just kind of scouting out the lurkers on the high ground. Yenta going to drop this third base for Protoss. Speed lanes at Hydra's kind of driving Protoss back. We'll see if uh, he notices this drop. Oh, he sees it. Dragoon just saw it. He saw the drop. I just saw him mouse over on the minimap. He's sending his entire army back, but this is something that you never want to have to do as a Protoss. When your army is that far out of position, to just have to bring everything back so that you can deal with it. So frustrating. Honestly, this is just exactly what Zerg wants. It's for the army to go back, because Zerg is behind in supply. Um... So not a very effective drop here, um, but it did delay the Protoss push by a lot. I feel like if he had unloaded in the free space or brought a lot more Hydras, it would have been better, because I think the main thing to take out there would have been the gateways. But he might have also been planning on dropping the third, um, but saw that there were no probes there. I still think it would have been worth Like, I'm not good. So don't take my opinion, don't take my opinion super seriously, chat. But I think it would have been good to take out the Nexus anyways, because at some point you've got to, even if you don't get any probes, if you just deny that third for a long enough time, Protoss mines out and then you win the game. Oh, true. True, I didn't even think of that. Get to drop and, and uh, just take out the Nexus. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Takes a while before you can uh, get mining going there again, you're right. But like you the said... The longer you he, can keep Protoss on one base. I kind of expected that drop to be more Hydra heavy as well. So, it's kind of iffy on if he would be able to take out the Nexus with just a few lurkers. And Did he have some lings in there as well that just immediately died he to storm? He had some lings. Yeah, you did. Uh, the thing is, is that the I think to be in melee range with a Nexus, he would have been in range of the cannons for the length. Mm. I think mean, he needed range units to take that to siege that other third. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. We do see Dragoon is going to take top left, and we'll kind of see what Yenta decides to do about this because I feel like this goes long, kind of split map. This is going to be, should be good for Protoss. Yeah, agreed. I feel like Protoss really, if you go split map, you pretty much have everything you need to possibly win the game. Um, if, really, if you just add in Reavers, then you're set. Even if Zerg goes Hive Tech, you got, it. You got all the tools. It's just a matter of using them properly. Yeah, for sure. Going for another drop. We do have three cannons in place this time, though. Let's see how effective this drop is. 
lot. No. Oof. All right, we do lots of hydras in this drop. Um, so nicer than the previous drop. Seriously, just right-click the nexus, Yanta. Just right-click. Never mind. After after those storms, six storms. How many kills does that? Two. What? Oh, there were multiple Templar there. I thought there was only one Templar. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, that just killed every oh, Hydra. My goodness. And then he clicked on it. It's the like rage. two kills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Pro's going to try and start mining from this top left base. Pretty big supply lead for uh, Dragoon now. Man, I feel like that if he had positioned that drop a little bit better, it could have done a lot of damage. You know? Yeah, it felt like it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a mistake. Just at oh, the very man, beginning. Oh picking off these high templars. Ooh, so worth it. So worth it. He did lose quite a few quite a few hydralisks there, but any Templar you can pick off. Just so so frustrating, because Protoss is always gonna be always gonna be low on gas. Uh, I say as he has a 1.5k gas bank. But <laughs> oh, storm drop! Oh, storm drop at the natural. He kills. Okay, a little bit anticlimactic. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he kills almost every single he, drone mining minerals there. He kills every drone. He flies in the main like it's not mined out. 30 minutes into <laughs> yeah, the game. 25 <laughs> minutes into the game. It's probably... it's There's a chance. There's a chance. Might as well. All right. It does manage to pick off that shuttle with some Scourge. Did you just say Scourge? And I was kind of... Scourge? Oh, I thought you Scourge. said, like, with a W in it. I was like, okay. Strong. We're going okay. to have a talk. But... Uh, look, I can't... You can't ask me to pronounce consonances. <laughs> Did you just say consonances? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You can't you can't <laughs> ask this of me. It's not fair. It is unreasonable. It is an unreasonable request. Chat, this is why we have Strom on the cast. She's she's on her consonances pronunciation. <laughs> I can't, you can't ask this of me. It's too much. It's too much. I'm a Zerg player. Gold. Come on. That was gold. Small brain. Small brain. Zerg player. Small brain. Small brain. Oh my gosh. And I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Protoss seems, right. Protoss seems pretty unbreakable right now. He's got a lot of cannons everywhere. Uh, Yenta does have drops to try and get into favorable positions. But I just don't know if that's going to be enough right now. And getting into a split map situation usually pretty good for Protoss, like you were saying. He needs to stop bleeding units. He definitely needs to take 12 o'clock, Yenta. Um, and then I think he just needs to make a ton of lurkers. Yeah, those like attacks if he just like mass lurker. For Yanta. Yeah, you can kind of like if you split map and you just kind of like turtle behind mass lurker, um, it can be pretty good even if you're on e even bases. This though, lurkers out of position uh, are going to get on top of these drones. Um, and I think we might be seeing the beginning of the end here as Yenta drops down up, uh, under 100 supply, losing all the drones at his fourth base. Oh, Hello? Crackling's pretty good, though. Does he have Crack? I don't know. Speedling's pretty good. Whatever. No, he doesn't have Cracklings. No Crack. But he lost every drone. He does have Hive, so it's a matter of time now. Uh, I think, like we were saying last game, or the last long game, excuse me, it's, it's been a couple games now, but the Neo Bloody Ridge game. 
Um, right, the five pool game. If he goes to <laughs> Filers, I think that would be a lot better for him because he doesn't quite have the the minerals to yeah. go ultralisks, but he does have a lot of excess gas. Well, that's what I'm saying with the lurkers, right? Like he just what he needs to do is take in this situation is take twelve o'clock, um, defend with mass lurker, and try and build as few links as possible. And then yeah, sit behind Dark Form and Plague. And just keep plaguing the army of Protoss. Cause Plague does permanent damage to Protoss units. Uh for those of you who don't know, there is um those of your unit, the Defiler, uh does uh, it's there's a spell called plague that you can use on the protoss army and it doesn't damage the shields uh but the actual health of protoss um it will take permanent damage just by casting the spell it's pretty good the only thing i'm worried about with the going mass lurkers is dragoon as we can see starting already the goon reaver siege Right, so, right. A little scary for Zerg. Y Yenta does decide to tap out. All right. So Dragoon is going to take the lead in this series, 3 1. That is a difficult map for Zerg, though, I gotta say, in a long game. Do you remember, guys, that that game started with a proxy hatch in Protoss's main? Sound with a nice play over here, little brother. Uh, all right, we got one more game, and then we're gonna go into a, another quick break. But we've got Overwatch coming right up. All right, this is a, another map that I think is pretty good for PVZ. So we might uh, not sure what we're gonna say what we're gonna see here. It's is lo much longer. Uh, rush distance than some two player maps. Definitely not a uh, short rush, rush distance. Um, lots of kind of ups and downs in the terrain. Right. And that's part of why I think it's that's part of why I think it's pretty good for PVZ as well. Uh, anytime you have a base, anytime you have a base that has a ramp up to it in this matchup, it just becomes so much more difficult for Zerg to deny and eventually try and attack it later on right right and and the third and the fourth are both kind of like up a ramp and they have small surface area like i feel like the surface area is the important thing because you just like if there's no room to get your hydras up the ramp you can't bust the cannons yeah and unlike a map like fighting spirit where possibly you could argue like why don't you just take the three high ground as your first three bases and then take a another main you can't drop into these bases on overwatch whereas the other main would be so big on fighting spirit that you could drop and try and take it out right but there's just all right no it looks like we're going anything. to yeah it's true okay we're gonna hop right into our next game we do have our zerg player yanta in the top left and our protoss player dragoon in we currently have Dragoon up 3-2 in this series. Close nail-biter series so far. If you're just tuning in now, guys, this is a best of nine CPL show match, end of the world style. So if you know the Korean uh, end of the world series where they do best of nines and they play all nine games. That's kind of what we're doing here, um, mostly for our tier one and tier zero CPL players. So kind of like, you know, 1,600 plus MMR. Uh, just some nice best of nine uh, show matches. Shout out to IRK Tim, our observer for this match, so that Least doesn't lag out our players and we can live cast. <laughs> yeah, me me on the observing, not <laughs> ideal, to say the least. So super yeah, grateful I mean, for Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that it's because of lag, but we also know it's because of your observing. It's just Rip a given. Me. Rip me. 
But <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. We can't. Uh, is he going for a 12 hatch on a two player map? This is bold. No, he's going for open. He did. What? No, he did the he did extractor trick. Mm. That was ten pool. I don't really know the po the point of that. To be it's honest, yeah, it's with Yenta you. man. He just does his. It's like Aggie. <laughs> mine. It's like Aggie. It's like a mini Aggie. That's what I was looking for. But like, Yenta's better than Aggie. Like, by quite a bit. He's better, but he's also not quite as offbeat. You know what I'm saying? That was the only thing I was trying to say. Is he's not... Yeah, okay, Like, okay. Aggie has legitimately... I've played him, and he's in-hatched me three times in a row. Yenta's pulled out a couple <laughs> different strategies, but it has not been that I level. mean, to be fair, he has proxy... He has proxy hatched twice and five pulled once, and this is our sixth game? Okay. You got me there. And, you got me and there. a nine pool speeded once. There's been one game that was over pool with nothing weird. So far we have a five pool, two proxy hatches, a nine pool speed, and an over pool. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we've had two macro games. An over pool extractor trick. <laughs> we, that's impressive that we've had two yeah. macro games in all this... All right, we do see that Protoss is going to try and cannon rush Zerg's third base. Um, he doesn't have an overlord over that base, so he can do that. And because the probe is in the main, I suspect Yenta is not going to notice this. You know? All right, we do see he's sending that overlord into the main. I'm not a huge fan of this, though, especially against Overpool, uh, just because... Even if it hatches and he starts the cannons at the perfect time so it starts shooting it right as it hatches, you just make a bunch of lings and send it over before the hatchery dies, right? Unless you make like five cannons, which seems excessive. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if, if this is something that he's planned and done before, it might work out for him. But if he's just winging this... I feel like Yenta's okay on two bases. I feel like he's two base man. He'll just go mute us. It'll be fine. Like, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, you know what? It's very... I feel like it's on brand with the series. Um, we'll see if he notices. Yenta's not looking at it now. He does He does see it. Um, first cannon finishing. So he is going to have to build lings to stop this. Oh, send it right, over we're just drums. going to build a sunk. I think that one sunk is actually out of range of the cannons, so we can just sunk it out of range. Um, the hatchery gonna go down? I was not expecting this. The hatchery went down a lot faster than I was expecting. Two cannons, pretty good. Yeah. But like you said, Yenta, no stranger to being on two bases. He'll probably just remake the hatch, too, to be honest. I mean, he might go... Yeah, re yeah. hatch just gets remade. Um, and I mean, that was two cannons and a pylon from Protoss. Zerg's so tech didn't get delayed. Uh, he lost a little bit of larva. Um, but that's like 100... Three, that's 400 minerals from Protoss, and the hatch is 100 minerals from Zerg. Or the hatch is 300 minerals from Zerg. Plus the sunk, so I guess it's like, maybe even? He does get a drone with the with the Zealot, which is nice. That's also I don't know, how do you feel about this? I feel like it's how relatively do you feel about even. This? I feel like it's relatively even. Yeah. Like, Zerg was never going to be, was never gonna be saturated on that base anyways. Like you said, you didn't need the base for mining. Uh, so it really does come down more to the the larva aspect, which I'm not as confident in. But just from pure mineral standpoint, pretty even on minerals. I'd give it a slight advantage for Protoss. 
uh, just because you don't have quite as much production as the Zerg for quite a for a longer time. He's going for a big ling all in. What is happening? So many lings. What is happening? Yeah, just run lings into the wall. I hear that's good. Oh my gosh. I seriously, I feel like there's so many lings you could just attack the wall and still bust through. Nah, lings die super fast to cannons and cannons shoot really fast. He's continuing though. He's making looks more... like looks like that's what we're doing though, or is yeah. he just going to go into mutas? Yenta is he going to build a couple mutas? Consensus. Does he have a spire? I was I was not yeah he has a spire. All. Oh my gosh! Yeah, see, he has a spire. <laughs> what like, is going on? I'm just this caster, series is dude. so Expect weird. To pay attention to the game. <laughs> what do you mean? This is so funny. One corsair. Hopefully, he's right. got a scourge in there. Uh. Scourge, excuse me. It scourge. Scourges. Alright. Mutas and Corsair are going to just fly right on by. Um, Say what's up. Alright. Is adding more cannons in the mineral line? I think that... I, I don't know what this is. I think this is just like we're just going to attack the cannons with the mutas and then attack the wall with the links but there's so many zealots here and you can never get good surface area with the wall right no you're just the idea is just to attack the wall and then the mutas take da damage from the cannons right i think so many links dying but he uh, i don't know it yeah, does get the second gonna... cannon All right, there's still a lot of lings out there, though. Like, I feel like he can run back in right now. Like, if he runs in right now, there's like there's no zealots. Where'd the zealots go? There's the two zealots. Is, as Tim's pointing out, there's two there's two cannons in the mineral line. If there was no more cannons at all in the natural, I'd agree with you. But those cannons are just yeah, going to shoot true. so far that it's going to take out these lings. All right. All right, so Zerg is droning behind this. Um, kind of a weird little attack after the cannon rush on the third base. Looks like Zergs will probably going to just build up some mutalisks and kind of keep a little bit of a loose contain. All right, we do see Zerg is kind of oversaturated the natural. Tim's pointing out and. Uh, Undersaturated in the main. I think he only had like uh, six or eight drones in the main. Eight drones in the main. So he's missing one drone in the main. And has uh, actually two extra drones in the natural. So, But we we're droning right up on the three bases. So Is there cannons in the main? Yeah, there's a cannon in the main as well. All right, so we have another weird game here for you guys. This time, Protoss instigated the weirdness. Yeah, that is a little that is a little unexpected. It's usually been Yenta starting things off with the weird, but Dragoon going <laughs> straight for the cannon rush uh, into getting Ling all in into not. It's not really an all not in because dying. Zerg is still in the still in the game. <laughs> like he's he's down thirty supplies, so that's really rough. Yeah. Um, on the bright side, yeah, he is down thirty supply. Hear me out. That one creep, that one sunken from the beginning of the game, coming in handy right about now. As soon as these zealots push out, just throwing it out there. Just throwing True. It out there. He does. He does also have. I think four or five mutas and a set of scourge. So, and I think it's only the two coursers. Looks like he built up to about four. All right, scourge can still hit that though. Oh yeah, as long as it's you not... get you get like two or three of those coursers and you can just fight that with mutas. Looks like dragoon, aware of this, going to build some archons. He seems to like his archon push, his archon DT push. We've seen him do that a couple times. Yeah, kind of funny. I've never seen anyone at this level use Archons quite as much as Dragoon does. 
Uh, usually it's just kind of a last ditch effort versus mutalisks, but he's preemptive. He preemptively made them in the game. Uh, was it the nine pool speed game where he wasn't quite sure? And then he made them just against a few. No, he didn't make here. them the nine pool speed game. The nine pool speed game. He got really, really behind with the links. Oh, right, really right, right, right. Yeah, he pretty much looks like he that. did just lose, lose a Corsair to some scourge. Uh, looks like Dragoon gonna throw down some more gateways. It's floating a little bit of money here. Uh, I'm just kind of worried that Zerga is not going to get a fourth base, though. It's kind of where I'm at with this right now. Does get another Corsair, so moves the count back down to three. I think we're kind of starting to be in the range where we could see a Muta switch again from Yanta. Um, and then kind of like not necessarily to fight the army, but to, yeah, right. right. Okay, two Corsairs now. But to, <laughs> to counterattack, yeah. Um, all right, just going to kind of send the existing mutas over. Oof, going to take a couple hits from the Archons, though. Does slow down that push a little bit. And it looks like Genta's going to use the mobility granted by the Mutas to go check for a third base from Protoss. Which is really important, because if Protoss has a third base up, you feel really bad about not having a fourth. Man, is he going to check this? If he checked that other location, he could have killed it. But he's just a little bit slow check checking it. it, and the cannons are going to... I don't think he's going to check it, man. Oh, the cannons gosh. finish. Okay, so he gets Scourge Hits. He gets Scourge Hits on both the remaining Corsairs. I definitely... I'm starting to like more and more the idea of Muta switching again, especially with this third base. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many cannons at the... There's so many cannons at the front, but there's no cannons really protecting the mineral line there. So that could be something to irritate the Protoss. Can he just kill... It? Yeah, he can just fight these straight up. Yeah, they both had already taken damage from Scourge as well on their actual health. Is that an overlord that's in bottom left? This is a... I I'm thought it might sure be a no drone. I thought he was going to hide there. another. I thought he was going to hide another base. Seemed like something that would happen. Yeah, with the way All this right. series is going, I definitely would expect it as well. That'd be... <laughs> Alright. This push looking pretty scary, though. Not very many Dragoons from Dragoon, but not very many Lurkers from Yenta. So... From Lurker? Should we just call him Lurker now? Is it just Lurker versus Dragoon? Lurker is that what the series Dragoon. has come to? But then, it implies that we think Yenta's gonna get beaten like Dragoons beat Lurkers. So I don't know about that one. But, do Dragoons really beat Lurkers? That is the question. <laughs> Tim! <laughs> <laughs> so, it's two, two against one in this, uh... All right, we're calling Yento Lurker. This that's production new, team, Lurker. See, that's my thing, though. I just rename whoever we're casting. Yeah, that's it's your like Crowy. That's your whole. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Crowy and Roach. Good times. Yeah, Roach. Oh my gosh, are these mutas? I think all these mutas die to a single. Yeah, I think okay. they're about to. Yep. Yeah. Goodbye. GG. Not oh, exactly he saves one of them. Rip to those mutas. Alright, Protoss is taking a third base, and Zerg doesn't seem very close to having the potential to take a third base of his own. Um, that's so many cannons. So many cannons. I actually, I really like that from Dragoon, because I feel like one of the things that Yenta could do to get back in these games is to take the third base out. And he's really not ever under defending it. You know? Yeah, totally. Totally. Oh, he's just gonna try and bust the main. Alright, cool. Or fight the army. Maybe both. Not sure he's got enough to fight this army, though. Lurkers are good, know, though. Lurkers are good units. Lurkers are good units. Oh, no overlord, though. 
No, Overlord. That DT actually doing a ton of damage. Yeah, taking out all the high value units. Getting great storms as well. Man. Is this it? Yeah, at sixty-seven to one hundred and twenty-four supply, I'm not feeling good about this for our proto or for our Zerg player here. Third base economy hasn't kicked in yet for Protoss, um, but I feel like Genta is kind of bleeding units a little bit. Yeah, and he just doesn't really have as much at home to support the continued pressure. He does tap out. GG, Dragoon up. 4-2. Alright. I think we are taking a quick break after this game, guys. Again, another kind of 15-minute break. Or 10-minute uh, break. 8-minute break. Something like that. Um, Just keep talking it down. 4-minute break. 2-minute break. Well, we're not even going to take a break. I have to get some water. That's okay. the break. <laughs> Alright, but please don't go away because we have three more games for you when you get back. We do see he's utilizing Storm. We haven't seen him kind of get to that point in the uh, other games so far. Right. GG is called. Probably just gonna... Well, maybe he's got a build plan for this map. It's kind of a hard one to just get. I mean, you can get four bases. Then you're kind of pooped. You can kind of get five, but it's hard. Uh, yeah. We appear to have some late tech from Aggie. Usually you want your Stargate going down right about now, but his Cybernetic Score is still in the running. Uh, not exactly sure what happened there. Um, he did like add an extra cannon. Zealots. He added the extra cannon, that's true. And he yeah. has two Zealots before the Cybercore finishes, which makes me think he wins Zealot first. Um, going oh, he's doing a reaver. He's going to do a reaver build. This doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I think that George is going to scout it, though. It looks like he's going to send an overlord right into the main. I've seen that on the map. Um, so I think that's probably the reason for the weird timings of things. And also because of the cannon. The extra cannon. On... Um, he's still only on two links. I think he is. Okay, Zealot's moving out, so he's gonna have to build build a couple more links here to deal with that. Um, and his Overlord is going to scout the Robo. So you have an idea oh, that something's up. It, yeah. We'll see if he clicks on it. Moved over to his Overlord yet. We'll see if he... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, he actually moves, moves it down. So I'm not sure. He probably, I think he probably saw the robo. He yeah, did the uh, robo his screen bounce robo, over so it. So he's probably okay. Yeah. This will be interesting. I might have to. I will see what his. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know that I had anything super insightful to say. I was going to say that he might go mute us. Hmm. That is a good play. Does he wants fire. Yeah. Uh. Like, even just five mutas. But it looks like he's building hydros already. Oh, he didn't go square. Oh, interesting. Maybe he just forgot to put the spire down, or maybe this is some kind of lurker build. Lurker build seems more likely. I think there's also, remember, there was a while ago, there was that build circulating on Jan server that was like uh, this, the Sulky DVP build, where you just don't get a spire until later and just go hydro lurker. Oh, that's actually what I do, ZVP. Uh, the only reason I don't think that's the case is because you get your third hatch before gas, and so oh. your third hatch generally tends to go down at, like, uh, 250, something like that, and his third hatch <laughs> didn't go down until, like, 330. Uh, but... He also sent his drone in the wrong direction. Actually. He did misclick. Uh, five cannons from Aggie. Uh, that's a bold play. Uh, just making sure he doesn't die to anything. Usually when you go for a robo like this, you put the robo in front, and then you don't have to make as many cannons because you can just crawl a reaver out, but Aggie never afraid to march by the beat of his own drum. Uh, 
going for more of a harass based play, keeping the robo safe, and going to get a shuttle probably with speed. This, oh, it's drop. It's drop, isn't it? It's fast Yikes. drop. Yikes. Okay. Look at this. That's the build. It's a. It's no good this game. This is. Painful. This is, I think, pretty good against what Aggie's doing, though. Like. Especially if he moves the shuttle out first, but like he has one reaver, he's building a shuttle. Um, yeah, and he got shuttle speed and he's moving the shuttle out. Just as the overlords come in, and it's all hydras. So hydras are... Oh, and he doesn't oh, even he doesn't see even it yet. see it. That's so unfortunate. Oh my goodness. This is oh so good. Gosh. By George. Yeah. I love this play. Rip the dream. Oh man, and here's the reaction by Aga. He's gonna have to bring the Reaver right back. Um, and I don't know that he can stop this because he just doesn't have very many units because he went for such a fast Reaver. Yeah, and if you micro your Hydra as well, you just can't. You There's just, just can't so many Hydras. Hydras. Yeah. Oh, and he just loses the shuttle immediately. I think this is game. Rip. Wow. Aggie said it better. Three lengths before Mutas and kind of ambushed that T-Rex Academy push. Uh, and now he's going to go into his nine Mutas and looks like straight into Winter immediately to defend that third base. Um, and you can see what I was talking about earlier in that base about the uh, just kind of like the area being a little bit smaller. So it should be fairly easy to defend the workers. Yeah. The just gonna well maybe he's got a build plan for this planks before mutas and kind of ambush that t-rex academy push uh and now he's going to go into his nine mutas and looks like straight into winter immediately to defend that third base um and you can see what i was talking about earlier in that base about the uh just kind of like the area being a little bit smaller so it should be fairly easy to defend with workers yeah that makes a lot of sense so the the Relatively, relatively quick lurker play, even though he got his mutas out and everything, of course. Uh, but only going for the nine mutas, am I correct? Yeah? Can we see how many mutas uh, he has? I think so. I think it was only nine mutas. I only saw him make nine. We'll see if he flies two more, or across the map. Probably just gonna... Well, maybe... I'm not sure. Like, counterattacks just seem like a really strong way to beat Terran players. It's just don't engage the front of their army. I remember watching a shuttle replay we see, as we see Snipe taking out the third. I remember watching a shuttle replay where the game went on 30 minutes, and he engaged the main Terran army like once or twice, and it just blew my mind. I was like, how is Terran supposed to do this if you just can't force Probably just gonna. Well, maybe he's got a build plan for this map. Probably just gonna. Well, maybe he's got a build plan. Probably just gonna. Well, maybe he's got a build plan for this map. It's kind of a hard one to just get. I mean, you can get four bases, then you're kind of pooped. You can kind of get five, but it's hard. Uh, yeah. We appear to have some late tech from Aggie. Usually you want your Stargate going down right about now, but his Cybernetic Explorer is still in the running. Uh, not exactly sure what happened there. Um, looks he did like add an extra times. cannon. He added the extra cannons, that's true. And he yeah. has two Zealots before the Cyberpore finishes, which makes me think he wins Zealot first. Um, going oh, he's run. doing a reaver. He's gonna do a reaver build. This doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I think that George is gonna scout it though, so he's gonna send an overlord right into the main. I've seen that on the map. Um, so I think that's probably the reason for the weird timings of things, and also because of the cannon. The extra cannon. Um, he's still only on two lengths. I think he is. He's moving out, so he's gonna have to build 
build a couple more lanes here to deal with that. Um, and his overlord is going to scout the robo. So we have an idea Probably that something's up. Yeah. We'll see if he clicks on it. Moved over to his overlord yet. We'll see if he... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, he actually moves moves it down, so I'm not sure. He probably I think he probably saw the robo. He did yeah, that. Uh, his screen bounced robot, over so it, so. Probably okay. Yeah. This will be interesting. I might have to. I will see what his. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know that I had anything super insightful to say. I was going to say that he might go mute us. Hmm. That is a good play. Does he wants fire. Yeah. Uh, like, even just five mutas. But it looks like he's building hydras already. Oh, he didn't go spire. Oh, interesting. Maybe he just forgot to put the spire down, or maybe this is some kind of lurker build. Lurker build seems more likely. I think there's also, remember, there was a while ago, there was that build circulating on Jan server that was like, uh, this, the soul key. DVP build where you just don't get a spire until later and just go hydro worker. Oh, that's actually what I do, ZVP. Uh, the only reason I don't think that's the case is because you get your third hatch before gas. And so oh. your third hatch generally tends to go down at like uh, 250, something like that. And his third hatch <laughs> didn't go down until like 330. Uh, but he also sent his drone in the wrong direction. Actually. He did misclick. Uh, Five cannons from Aggie. Uh, that's a bold play. Uh, just making sure he doesn't die to anything. Usually when you go for a robo like this, you put the robo in front, and then you don't have to make as many cannons because you can just crawl a reaver out, but Aggie never afraid to march by the beat of his own drum. Uh, going for more of a harass-based play, keeping the robo safe, and gonna get a shuttle probably with speed. This, oh, it's drop. It's drop, isn't it? It's fast Yikes. drop. Yikes. Okay. Look at this. That's a build. It's a. It's no good this game. This is. Painful. This is, I think, pretty good against what Aggie's doing, though. Like, especially if he moves the shuttle out first, but like he has one reaver, he's building a shuttle. Um, yeah, and he got shuttle speed and he's moving the shuttle out just as the overlords come in and it's all hydras So hydras are oh, and he doesn't oh, even, he see, doesn't it even yet. see it That's so unfortunate. Oh my goodness. This is oh so good gosh. by George. Yeah. I love this play Rip the dream. Oh man, and here's the reaction by Aga. He's gonna have to bring the reaver right back Um and I don't know that he can stop this because he just doesn't have very many units because he went for such a fast reaper. Yeah, and if you micro your hydra as well, you just can't. You There's just, just can't so take many out hydras. All these hydras. Yeah. Oh, and he just loses a shuttle immediately. I think this is game. Rip. Wow. Aggie said it better. Great. Some lengths before mutas and kind of ambushed that T Rex Academy push. Uh, and now he's going to go in his nine mutas and looks like straight into Lurker immediately to defend that third base. Um, and you can see what I was talking about earlier in that base about the, uh, just kind of like the area being a little bit smaller, so it should be fairly easy to defend the workers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the, the relatively, relatively quick Lurker play, even though he got his mutas out and everything, of course, uh, but... Only going for the nine mutas, am I correct? Yeah. Can we see how many mutas? Uh, he has? I think so. I think it was only nine mutas. I only saw him make nine. We'll see if he flies more or across the map. Um. As oh, Kurt's not Kurt's quite defending the, the main. Oh, that's rough. Um. Yeah, this is going very well for a third right here. Um, just getting that first uh, push, like just kind of bodied. Karen makes uh, Zerg's position very strong on the map, and I expect him to go probably straight into Hive, um, just based on how fast he got those lurkers. Oh look, yeah, Queen Seth's coming down right now. You're killing it right now. That way is strong. Let's go. Yeah, well, I mean, this guy's—I've <laughs> been playing with this guy for like 
last five days you've been teaching me stuff, so. Very true, very true. It always helps when you're casting something. It is. Yeah, true. And I know Father as well pretty well, so. Oh, Muta's taking a bunch of damage on their one run, though. But on did only lose two. We're back, folks. We're starting the game right away. <laughs> All right, so our next map here is Tau Cross, and we have Yenta on the left hand side of the map and Raccoon in the top right. Yeah, man, we were just like talking about what we should do over the break while we were waiting for one of our players to come back, and then they just went and started the game while we're still talking about it. Tim, <laughs> high quality observer. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about game starting. <laughs> <laughs> Poor quality. Of audio. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking yeah. for. For once, Tim has the words, and, or at least does not. <laughs> exactly. Who would have imagined that? All right. This to me is the nine seven three map. Yeah, I agree. It's very hard to get a good wall that you can fit a lot of cannons behind. So it's very possible to just go for a straight bust here. I feel like for Yenta, though, 973 is almost, like, too normal for him. You know? <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, that's too much that. of That's too much of a, like, you see the build and you know what he's going for. <laughs> yeah, you gotta make it just so obscure that he can't possibly comprehend what's happening. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Those exact words. Um, all right, for any of you who are just tuning in now, this is a best of nine uh, apocalypse style or end of the world style, style show match series uh, in honor of the apocalypse between our Zerg player, Ira Kayenta, and our Protoss player, Dragoon. It is a CPL show match. Uh, Dragoon is with Sam Yangfire. He is a tier zero player and an assistant coach. And RK Yenta is a tier one Zerg player on the European uh, compatible time zone team or team socialized healthcare. <laughs> and <laughs> it is, we are playing all nine maps, uh, even if we have a series window here. And currently we have Dragoon on match point at four to two. Uh, and we have three games left in this series. So we're going to see how this kind of plays out. We've had some very exciting games so far. Um, especially if you enjoy off-brand play, I recommend uh, watching the VOD of the previous games because there were some very interesting games. Um, and I'm excited to cast three more games with these players. I'm just saying, man, speaking of good walls, this mm, delight. Tim, back me up here. Is this not perfect? Like, there's nothing sticking out so far that... There's nothing <laughs> sticking out. So, Like, when I make a wall on this map, my gateway is out so far that the Hydras can pick it off without range, and it's just like, all right, well, I guess... I guess I don't know. All right, we do have the Zealot coming in the main, going to be deterred with a little bit of a drone drill, and the links are now popped out and ready to deal with the Zealot. Just a classic gate expand. Um, looks like no kind of overreaction from Yenta this time. We did have him get a little bit confused in the first game and think that a uh, gate expand was two gate. But that third hatchery just gonna stay up, and oh, we do have an idle drone behind the mineral line in the main that Tim just pointed out. Um, but it looks like a fairly on. Oh, hydrogen. Nine seven. Three. Can I just say? Can I just say I called it? Uh, you did call it, but then you like took it back. You were like, no, that's too normal. That's too normal. Uh, true, true. But, to be fair, 973 off of gate expand is not really that normal. It's kind of weird. So... You're right, you're right. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Maybe if it was Forge Fast Expand, he would have thought better. 
Yeah, if it was Forge Fast Expand, it'd be like, now we're going into four hatchery, hatchery Mutalisk into Guardian. Yeah. We'll just play it like it's ZBT. The trick is, so, is just that Protoss never knows what you're doing. Not that they just don't know what build you're doing, just that they just have no idea what build you even could be doing. That's yeah, exactly. the real goal here, guys. Exactly. The, the big brain play is is make it so that they can never counter your strategy because they don't know what your strategy is. Exactly. Yeah, that's the real strat. Seems though that both of these players are pretty comfortable with um, off-brand games. We do see the probe is going to scout this and a second cannon being added here for Dragoon. We do also have four zealots out. Uh, and he's going to add another cannon in the back, which is really nice. And I guess we're just going to see how this, um, how the micro goes and how he hides. Like, the real strategy with um, Three Hatch Hydra nowadays is kind of, oh, lay it right away. So we'll see if he scouts this, because this isn't super all in from Yenta, because he's going lair immediately. It is the cheese that doesn't cheese, folks. It is a good build. However, Dragoon Gall... It is it a good like, build. Uh, looks like going Sairless, uh, which is, as far as you can get, a pretty good, pretty good response... I'm not going to say counter, but it's definitely a very good response to this build. Really? I feel like this is... I honestly, as a Zerg player, I like it when they don't go Corsair against 973 because it means they have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Right? Like, he doesn't know. He's building three more cannons. He has no idea. He thinks he's building more Hydras. He doesn't actually need these extra cannons. I don't understand why he's building the extra cannons but as far as in general well he doesn't know he doesn't see he doesn't know if there's more hydras in the back um and he needs to not die right but yenta is teching to lair and adding hatcheries and drones so like in these situations like you can see zerg is actually ahead in supply right now mm -hmm. um that's kind of why i feel like the like, I feel like you don't have to keep making Corsairs after you first get a Corsair, but, like, just the no vision with a build like this right now, I feel like it's just, like, you're just happy with that as Zerg because you can just do... You can do whatever you want, and in all likelihood, Protoss is going to over-defend or under-defend, and you can kill them or get ahead, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. It was just what I had understood to be the proper response was just skip scared yeah skip sarah's i'm turning the strom over here and that guy's juice uh it's contagious four gate four gate push <laughs> to kind of put on pressure but i can see where you're yeah coming i don't know from. i mean i can see where you're coming from. yeah i don't know that's just how i feel as a zerg player like when i'm doing this build i enjoy it when protoss doesn't know what i'm doing but that doesn't mean that that's like the most comfortable place like way for Protoss to play. It just oh means gosh. I feel happy when it happens. Another hidden base. Oh this my god. Absurd. This guy. <laughs> Guys. I don't know anything about StarCraft compared to these two. It's all about the bases. <laughs> it's all about the 973 and do hide seven bases. 973 straight into lair. Off of gate expand into like I don't even know what's happening. Like these games, they're very good. Okay, Overlord does is gonna scout the main. We do have an observer out. Nice observer timing. Oh, I think he's gonna scout that hidden base with an overlord if he keeps. Oh no, he's moving it back. I was gonna say, I hope he kind of spreads his overlords around. Um, just since this is kind of a uh, uh, it's kind of not a lot of Sarah on the map from Protoss, so you can kind of spread your overlords around and have good map vision. Right, yeah. 
Yeah. With all that money going into a third base, though, he almost could just bust all those cannons with the natural. I mean, he's putting natural. down so many cannons that, it, like, he hasn't even put down a nexus yet. He's just putting down cannons at a potential third base location. Like, the thing is, though, that if Yenta doesn't punish this, he's going to be behind. So he has to he has to realize what's going on, and I don't think he does, is the problem. Like, as soon as he realizes the... Oh, he's going to scout it right now. Look, he's going to scout bottom. Right, so as long as he notices... Yeah, okay, he saw it. He just messed over it. Um, actually, I think if he just goes in text and naturally he could kill it. But he might also be able to kill the space, because Hydra's kill cannons super fast. Two forges to try and wall off as much as possible. I, I like what you said about attacking the natural. Um, if so, Hydras do kill cannons extremely quickly, and there's no units over there. But there's simply fewer Okay, we're walking cannons. through the storms. He can just... Okay. Right. I mean, I think either way, he can probably kill either base he wants to kill, to be honest. The thing that the thing that I liked about the as long as the he targets, you just win the game, you know. Whereas if you attack right, the third right. base, the game just goes on. True. He did have um, that. That is like a ton of money that Dragoon just invested in this base, though. Like two That's forges. Really true, yeah. We do see Dragoon is going to counterattack the fourth base of Yenta. Um, not really a base, mostly just a hatchery. Uh, lurkers are out, uh, and we do have plus one range attack for Zerg right now. It's interesting that Yenta's taking bases close to Dragoon. Um, usually you see Zerg try and take bases as far away from Protoss as possible because they have a faster army. And, uh, you want to make the slower Protoss army have to move around, um, move around the map as far as possible. That's so many High Templar that are so going to get caught. Or just gonna storm. Dude, storm is ridiculous. Storm Look at this. Good. Storm, good unit. That was actually just too high, too many High Templar to have, though, I think. No, I agree. You, you want, like, four at the maximum. Because if you saw, he really only got four storms off. But he had the energy for, like, ten. Yeah, we do see uh, Yenta up 10 supply now. Oh, they just jumped back to even. Um, but I am feeling good about his position, especially after he killed that bottom base that Protoss just kind of uh, invested a lot in, right? Because that was, that was so many cannons. That was two forges that finished. That was a nexus. Like, that was a lot of money that Dragoon spent setting up that base. Um, and I just feel like he doesn't have as many units right now as he should have because of that situation. We do see Yenta is going to retake that fourth hatchery now. Yeah, I'm just on the on the hidden base metagame. I'm going to throw this out there since we're advancing the meta in so many different ways here. Uh, I feel like if you take a hidden base... Just don't try and defend it, you know what I'm saying? Just, like, if they find it, they find it. But especially against Zerg with Hydras taking out cannons so fast, if they want to take out your hidden base, they're going to take out your hidden base once they scout it. You know? Yeah, true. You have to... Well, the thing is, is I think you have to suck the resources out of the base for the defense before you defend it, instead of, like, making the investment so large yeah, exactly exactly like pay for it with the resources that you mine with the resources problem. that you mine from it yeah. yeah all right we are seeing a bit of a lurker contain um come up here looks like protoss just gonna walk around it seems like a very protoss thing to do that one high templar does get picked off still even supplies uh, this is just going so yeah still even supplies answer. Yeah, this is looking like a very good macro game for Yenta. We do, did see the Overlord did get picked off, so the DT really doing some work here. Um, he does need to bring that other Overlord over. 
Uh, looks like the Hydras just have overwhelming numbers, though, so taking out the Dragons, even though the one Dark Templar is doing some damage. Dragoon really likes his DTs, huh? Yeah, he really does. DTs and Archons. <laughs> DTs and Archons. Alright, we do see a Reaver uh, out here for Dragoon. I don't think it's going to be... Okay, it is going to get out there. Okay, we do have a Reaver starting to slowly break the siege. But you just gotta wonder, it's 4 base to 2, will he be able to break out in time? Because once you break out of this contain, you really have to go kill him. If you want to have any chance. And I just don't know that he's going to be able to kill Yenta. Yeah, Dragoon also floating a lot of money. Um, he's now down 20 supply. Uh, again. So I'm really feeling good about Zerg's position here in this game. Now that there is a shuttle out. Okay, he's just oh, going nice to try and snipe the Reaver. Observer. Snipes the Observer. Oh, snipes the Reaver. Oh, the gets shuttle. the Reaver too. Yeah. Right. Oh man, this is going so well for Zerg right now. You're right, man. 973 broken build. It is, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. As soon as you said even 4-gate isn't good against it, I was like, all right, well, everything I know about 973 just went out the window. Oh, I think what's really good is when, yeah, well, there's no Corsairs. True, true. Although, to be fair, he did invest, like, 500, well, like a thousand or more minerals in a hidden base that just got completely shut down, so. Yeah, if you look at it that way, it's basically a free Muta switch. Well, yeah. a thousand gas, never mind. I'm oh, gonna get that High Templar. Oh my god, I think he got that shuttle too. I think there was a shuttle that just came out. Oh, maybe he didn't quite get it. I thought he did get the shuttle. And he does tap. Alright, GG is called. Just can't get out of that lurker contain uh, from Zerg. Nice game. Um, so the series continues. We don't have a, uh, a winner yet. So with two maps yet at the score of 4-3 for our Protoss player Dragoon, I'm still holding hope that we could have a 5-4, guys. I'm really hoping. I'm looking really hoping. Very possible. It's looking very possible. We could do it. All right, our next map here is going to be Clayfield. Scary this is our foreign-made map. Please, oh? I'm sorry, I'll stop talking. Oh, I, I just said that the map is Clayfields. And also, our Zerg player in the light pink in the bottom left is Yenta, and in the bottom right we have Dragoon, our blue Protoss player. And the map is Clayfields, which I was saying is a foreign-made map. Right, yeah. Also in the CPL map pool. If you guys don't know what CPL is, you should definitely get on the CPL Discord. Um, yeah. If you want to play or coach or cast or whatever you want to do, CPL is a great hub for kind of foreign learning brood war community really awesome place really awesome people so a big shout out to that great opportunity it's where we've got our it has gotten me from 1400 mmr all the way up to 1500 mmr over two years <laughs> so it is what you make of it folks it is what you make of it we have um there's some very good coaches in in, uh, in CPL. And some very active teams. Lots of uh, friends to be made. That's what I love about... For example... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, that's what I love about Brood War in general. I feel like there's unprecedented access to the top tier of foreigner players, where in other... in other uh, games, 
Like, no way Ninja is going to be helping anybody with Fortnite stuff, you know what I'm saying? But just yesterday, I was able to have TT1 help me out a little bit with my PvT, which was super, super cool. And obviously, CPL, you have great coaches left and right, every, all over the place. Yeah, I, I mean, we have some really... Yeah, I mean, we have some really big names. Like, we have uh, Crossy and Hawk. Uh, Crossy, Korean-American... Or, Korean-Canadian uh, Zerg player. Uh, wow. S-Rank Zerg player. Super strong. Um, and Hawk, the, the North American kind of Zerg champion uh went to corrupted cup last year in moscow and we also have like we have ariador liquid drone on the european team a long time brood war veteran um cryoc the european turn player we have cadenzi coaching come on and tai two another uh huge name in uh north american zerk yeah, just good names. Just good names, good people, good skill all around. If you're not involved, you should get involved. It's a great place to be. And I guess um, I guess now would also be a good time to mention that we do have our next Best of Nine Apocalypse style show match series on Monday uh, at 1 p.m. EDT. It is also going to be a PVC between Little Chava and Ben Elton. Um, so be sure to tune in for that one as well, guys. I think it's going to look quite a bit different than the series as far as the brand of games we see, but I hope that it will still be a good match. Yeah, I'm excited for that series as well. It's just been such a blast to cast all of these. Uh, regardless of whether it's a little bit of a wacky series like this one has been, or whether it's been this one has been micro. a great series it has been this has excellent. been a great series yeah this has been a really good series really super back and forth i think the most back and forth series yet because we've had we've had both players win long games yeah we've had both players win yeah long games we've had both players win short games it's been all over yeah. the place it's been all over the place All right, we do see just kind of like, looks like a very standard opening from Yenta. And same thing from Protoss. Nothing weird yet. I guess we should talk about the game a little bit, huh? We probably could talk about the game at some point, yeah. Nah. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> All right. Yeah, not really that much to say, though. It just looks like it's probably going to be 3-H uh, Spire, 5-H Hydra from Yenta. Yeah, looking pretty looking pretty standard from both sides. Uh, we've got everything coming out that looks like it should be. We've got a Stargate and a Citadel coming down for the Protoss player. Could this be classic plus one, plus one versus 3 hatch Spire? Did he ever put down the spire, though? That's my question. Looks like he just did. Ah, he did put down the spire. That's a lot of lings. That's like, a that's a lot of lings. This is just close to standard. They're just gonna, gonna get, get in. Gosh. What the heck? <laughs> Dude, this guy needs to block his wall. <laughs> well, it's easy to say that, but when you don't have, like, sending two probes over there indefinitely is just such a pain on your economy. GG. <laughs> All right, so Yenta hides the speedlings um, and manages to get them through the wall. And with that, we have our series tied up four to four. We are going to game nine, even though we were anyways. But this time it's game nine and it's match point. How about that? How about that, folks? And we do have Escalade coming at you for the series. The final map, Escalade. This has been... Wow, I'm excited. I am so excited for this last game. This has been quite... That was actually a... 
Yeah, it really has. That was actually kind of a clever thing that uh, Yenta did last game too, though, because I think he killed the probe and then he hid the speed lanes, and I think he scouted with the overlord that he wasn't uh, blocking his wall correctly. Yeah, super smart play. And in the grand scheme of things, even if that hadn't worked out, it's not a huge. It's not a game-ending investment. It was not all in by any means from Yenta. Yeah, for sure. It, I mean, it was a control group of links. He would have been behind if he hadn't done any damage, but he wouldn't have been dead. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Have we talked about Escalade before? Uh, how are we, we feeling about, about Escalade? We talked a little bit about how I don't know anything about it, but that's pretty much the right. extent of what we right. do. Right. That's pretty much what we talk about, though, in general, isn't it? Just, like, us not knowing what is going on ever. That's pretty much our casting our casting personalities is just yeah. the self-deprecation. It's basically our MO. It's just not knowing what's going on ever. That's pretty much why we're, that's pretty much why we're not getting 100 viewers. If we were, if only we were S-rank strong. If only we were S-rank. True, true. But you know what? S rank. We could be S rank and charming. That's now that real, would be something. The charm is yeah. what pulls in the viewers. The charm is what pulls. Right. In. So we just have to reach S rank now because then we would be also charming. It would it just would be, be the top tier cast. It would be like if Tasteless was S rank and Artosis was charming. You know what I'm saying? Right. 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 <laughs> We got Yenta taking a quick <laughs> second. He's trying to get himself hyped up for this last game. You got to get yourself right. hyped up. You got to bring it. You got to bring your A game. Right. It has been a quite a long series. Um, wow. Yeah, we started uh, almost three hours ago. So we are going. This is one of our longer series. I think the first two weren't actually that long were they but the, the last one we relatively quick yeah 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 and here we go all right so last map being escalade we are on match point and we have uh yenta irk yenta in the top left and dragoon in the bottom right You know, when I say Escalator, it really means Circuit Breakers. It's like, look at it. It's basically great. the same thing. It's Circuit Breakers. Who yeah, cares that there's not breakers. infinity bases on this map, you know? That's what gets me about Circuit yeah. Breakers. Yeah, and the naturals are, uh, naturals are in different places. And the gas. Okay. There's gas at every base. But, you know, other than that, it's yeah. basically Circuit Breakers. It's just Circuit Breakers. It's pretty much the same thing. Don't let, <laughs> don't let anybody tell you different, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You don't play to the map, or, yeah, the map plays to you. Honestly, this would definitely, if this was a ladder map, and Circuit Breakers was also a ladder map, at least 50% of the time I would put my SimCity in the wrong spot. You realize that this is a ladder map, and Circuit Breakers is also a ladder map. Wow. Like, what even is your point? I'm gonna <laughs> stop talking immediately. This is rough for me. This is oh, hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Least is trash. Right. There we go. Alright, well, yeah. We know that Foxbat's gonna watch the VOD, so we gotta have it in there. We gotta have it in there. In my defense, I do have it banned, I realized. Which is why I did not think about the fact that it was actually indeed a ladder map. Yemta going for the 11 hatch, getting a tiny, tiny bit greedy. Uh, but, you know, 11 hatch, perfectly safe against gate expand, and it actually is better against 2 gate, so, this is a soggy, you know? Who needs right. when your greediest build is also your safest build? That's the power we, Did right. we just get a host? Did we just get a host? Uh, not that I'm aware. Or a uh, raid? Holy moly! Jayun, yeah, you're the we... man. Jayun hosting us for 74 viewers. Uh, for those of you that's just tuning in, uh, we are in game point or match point of a best of nine Dragoon versus IRK's Yenta. 
Right, this is a CPL style apocalypse show match series. So end of the world style for uh, those of you who know the Korean series. And they are CPL players. Uh, Dragoon is an assistant coach and a uh, tier zero player on Sam Minkfire. And Arake Yenta is a tier one player on the European team, Team Socialized Healthcare. I Strong, thought they chose their name really well. We've got a problem. Oh my God. This is the perfect way. For those of you <laughs> just tuning in, this has been the wackiest series of all time. Highly recommend going back and watching the VOD. We've had five pools into macro games. We've had several different, uh, several different uh, types of cheeses. Nine pool speeds, three hatch hydras. What was the what was the other thing that we had? We had like two different one. Yeah, we had two proxy hatches. And one of them went into a macro game. I was thinking of. Oh my God. <laughs> and a cannon rush at cannon. the third base. <laughs> a cannon rush at the third base versus Overpool. And it worked. This is absurd. Kind Four of. Games. I mean, it killed the hatchery. It went into a macro game. <laughs> it killed the hatchery. It right. wasn't even a, a yeah. good idea. Sounds like we're... Yeah. It sounds like we're spoiling the series, but we're actually not. Like, it, it's wilder than we could ever put into words. There's no way that you couldn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Alright. I is... do hope that... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, this is exactly... This is exactly the way it needed to end. Yeah. Three proxy gateways. Oh my god. If Yento wins this, this was three in a row for him to end it, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. That's crazy. That's... Uh, Dragoon doesn't have a, have a natural, though. And Yenta doesn't right, really have right. a great way of scouting that. So it could be extremely dangerous. It probably will be extremely dangerous with Yenta on three separate bases. Yeah, he does have about six lings out right now, which is definitely not enough to stop the, I think, yeah, five, five zealots, zealots coming into his yeah, natural six right now. versus five zealots, what wins? He sure. should have, he should have speed lings. Um, so he should be able to just, like, he is supply block right now, though. He's 27 out of 27, so he's going to need some massive drone drills, and he should probably send that overlord into the natural right away. Or at least into the the main, because um, I don't think he was expecting this at all. No, it looks like he totally got caught off guard. He was just expecting a normal game. He had a spire going down and everything, and it looks like his drone. Was right, we do to go see. Down. Yeah, we do see a sunk being thrown down in the main. Um, the drones are going to have to evacuate though. A lot of zealots coming out here. Um, <sighs> Yeah, Yenta's just gonna have to macro out some speed lanes. Oh, G -G. just gives up. Oh GG is called. Dragoon not feeling confident in his ability to put things away in a macro game does feel confident in his four gate one base zealot play. Wow. All right, what a so a quick, a quick end to the series. Um, but we finally have that 5-4. We finally have that 5-4. Um, very back and forth uh, games, very back and forth series. Now, we are going to get Dragoon to hop on this call, uh, and we're going to get him here for an interview. We do see uh, <laughs> Chava in the chat celebrating the win for his teammate. I think he probably helped him practice last night, so hopefully Dragoon will return the favor, because. We are going to see Little Chava versus um, Ben Elton, the Russian Protoss player who I hear is possibly just really on the up and up right now. I heard someone call him the new Tim. Tim, of course, our observer. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that match as well. I'm excited to see. I've played Ben Elton a couple times. He's extremely strong. He's just so good. Yeah, I watched some uh, replays of him uh, versus Art of Turtle, who's on my uh, CPL team, and they were—they looked really strong. Yeah, like he looks like a really strong player. 
strong Protoss. And I think I was talking to, he knows Silver, because uh, they both live in the same area, and Silver didn't want to play him in a best of nine. So, <laughs> and he said his PBZ is really strong. So, I don't know. I'm looking forward to, uh, to watching some of his games. Hopefully we can get Dragoon on this call. Yeah, do we have a time for to, for that one? Or are we going to announce that later on? Oh, right. Okay, so the next best of nine is between Chava and Ben Elton. So that's PVC is going to be at 1 p.m. EDT on this stream. Uh, yeah, on Monday. So you should tune in. I think that that series will be a very different style of play than this one, but I'm hoping it's also going to be a close one. Oh, it looks like we do have Dragoon on the call. Hello? Hello? Hello! Congratulations on the win. Uh, I just... <laughs> I just um, subbed you in last... It was yesterday, right, that I asked you to come play? Because I had a player drop out. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of curious... Um, how did you prepare for this match on such short notice? Uh, I just used a little Shava and uh, played with him as much as I could since yesterday. Right. So were you just practicing the uh, just the maps, or did you have specific builds prepped for specific maps? Like I know the series kind of went sideways, but that kind of proxy three gate um, that you did a little bit on match point and then again on escalade like was that a prepped build no not at all <laughs> that yeah, was I just a prep. on the fly improv yeah i just uh i enjoyed the early zerglings and i just wanted to dish some of it back <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's really fair <laughs> yeah oh, that's so there were definitely some um some crazy openings from zergs and very or from zerg and some very like speedling heavy builds did were you expecting that type of style of play or were you kind of expecting to play more of a macro macro game uh so initially i was kind of in the dark um uh, as as the game three and on when i realized that he opened zerg heavy zergling he aggressive early and i knew if i got into the mid late game i was for the most part okay so i tried to survive but you know some some games it didn't work so well Right, yeah. Do you find, um, I know Lise talks a lot about having those like speed lane heavy openings, having scouting be denied, being really difficult for Protoss. How do you approach that and deal with that? Like when you survive the initial uh, speed lane attack, how do you deal with the fact that a lot of the times you're kind of in the dark and don't know what Zerg is doing? Yeah, so I try to kind of stick to the plan I want to do as it is for the most part some probably speed lots on my own opening um but i do try to create a diversion in some fashion maybe just send out a zella and in the meantime i'll send out a probe in the opposite direction and then loop it all the way around so i still try to get as much information as i can but sometimes it doesn't work out so you got to rely on that first sayer or just whatever you see at your doorstep yeah um one of the games I did notice you got your scouting denied pretty much completely was that three hatch Hydra game on Tau Cross off of the gate expand. What made you decide to go for a hidden expansion on that map in that situation? I just didn't expect him to scout as early as he did. I was trying to sneak a high Templar or two down there, but they got caught up in a Hydra army along the way. But yeah, I just felt once that contain started, the pressure of the contain started, I just knew I was in trouble. And there was nothing I could really uh, do to either break out or... I, I, I was just kind of up against the wall. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, because he, um, he didn't actually build that many Hydras before he started... He teched to Lair and started droning up, so... There was a lot of cannons, I guess, and then maybe you were a little bit behind. So I guess hiding expansion is one way you can get back from that? Yeah, that was probably a bad play in general, Try, trying, trying to force that third. So I, I deeply paid for it with the contain he eventually set up off of that. Right, right. Do you have anything least? Nope, you pretty much covered it. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for stepping in last minute to play the show match. I really appreciate it. Um, congrats on the win. You are on Sam Yang Fire, right? Correct. Can you talk a little bit about your experience on, in CPL so far this season and what it's like being an assistant coach, which is a new kind of role that we've added this season for CPL? Sure. Um, so I do enjoy the activity of the team so far. It seems very active. There's a lot of people in the Discord talking pretty much daily, um, and there's never really a shortage of matches, so to speak. Um, as for the coach, the assistant coach, it kind of feels like the uh, imposter syndrome where a lot of the time it's like, am I really like, you know, in this type of role? But, you know, you still try to give it your best shot. And uh, when people ask questions, you should try to answer them. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for playing the match. And thanks for assistant coaching in CPL. It's people like you that make uh, leagues like this possible. So thank you so much. Yeah, and congrats on the win. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right, guys, so this marks the end of our fourth Apocalypse show match series, uh, end of the world style. There have the three previous matches are available on Lee's Twitch channel as VODs, and we are going to try and get them uploaded to YouTube ASAP. The next show match is coming on Monday, 1 p.m. EDT, another PVZ between Little Chava from Sam Yang Fire and Ben Elton from Team Passion Daddies. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.